bags that I can't carry anymore I'm waiting for somebody else to carry me There's nothing that's there for me at my door All the people I know on who they used to be And if I try to change my life for more day There would be nobody else to save And I can't change into a person I don't wanna be so Oh, it's Saturday night Saturday afternoon, not Saturday night, as the panic hit the disco explodes. It's Saturday afternoon for Troy football. We have the whole portion of a 2018 season against a brand new opponent. Here on the schedule, the Bearcats and McKendrick. Expected a lot of offense here this afternoon at Garrison Stadium. And Gaddis Hodges back here on the airways with you this season for show one football. They welcome in a newcomer uh, to join me here on the broadcast. It's certainly a welcome addition to our broadcast here. He is the pride of North Myrtle Beach High School and uh, a member of the show one baseball team. I welcome Robert Burns to the broadcast. Robert, you uh, have done some football in the past, but uh, young guy, you have aspirations of being in the announcing business? Absolutely, absolutely. I've done a few high school games before. You know, I'm pretty excited to get on the collegiate level. So this will be my first collegiate game. Definitely yeah. excited for that. Well, both teams uh, have uh, combined to win uh, just two games. Unfortunately, for Chowan, McKendree's won both of those two. Uh, they're two and one coming here today. Chowan is at 0 and 2. But Ron, when you look at the schedule here, Chowan's a little bit at disadvantage. You're playing two FCS schools in Campbell and Davis. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, playing up is really a team building experience for a Division II school playing FCS level teams, you know, and that's going to that's gonna get you a lot of experience. Hopefully that'll work later down the road. They'll be more experienced and be ready to dominate a very tough CIAA conference. And we take a look at this uh, McKendry team. The Bearcats have a prolific passer, Reed's Met, Reese Metcalf. He has thrown the ball at a pretty good clip as far as what's amazing about it, Robert, he's thrown for 13 touchdowns in their three games at 872 yards. But his completion rate is 65.9%, which is outrageous. Very impressive, very impressive. The whole team seems pretty impressive. I, was, I believe they went 7-4 and four last year, and they as well played a pretty tough conference. And, and Metcalf is his third leading pass in history at the school. I think he's like 800 behind, so he'll easily be number two before he graduates. And I think that's the biggest headache for this show on defense, which has given up a lot of points. But then on the other hand, so has uh, McKendrick. You know, this might, I think it comes down to today, and this is easy to say, and this might be a generic thing to say, but I think the team that plays the best defense, and usually that's what happens in football, but it's really crucial today. The team that plays the best defense today is going to come out and win this game. Absolutely, absolutely. Chawan, actually, we had a hurricane evacuation, as you know, and the Chawan football team had quite a few days off. They didn't get to play against Shaw, so we'll see if they're rusty, if they can go right back into it. Yeah, it is going to be interesting. You know, we'll talk to Tim Place about that here momentarily, but uh, when you look at it, Robert, uh, it, Hurricane Florence has affected this football team, has it affected this CIAA, uh, Flor uh, Fayetteville State, Muslim City State, not playing for the second consecutive week. Chowan's missed a week, so is Shaw and some other schools in this league. So it's, it's really important uh, to see what happens here. Uh, like Coach Play said, he did, some players didn't get back until Wednesday. Right, right. Unfortunately, everyone's okay. Just missed Chowan University. You got a little bit of rain, a little bit of lightning, a little bit of thunder, but nothing too serious as far as flooding goes and damage to the campus. Yeah, we was really, really fortunate. Of course, it was a, a precautionary measure that had show on and, and surrounding schools couldn't afford not to take with a potential of a uh, Cat uh, 4 hurricane on, on our hand. Of course, you live in right down in Myrtle Beach, and uh, it was kind of directly headed towards your area. How did your area fare? Absolutely. Well, so basically how it works is all the water from Wilmington is now running down back towards back home, and uh, the river hasn't crested yet. It's supposed to crest Wednesday, so that'll be the highest that the waters get. Um, I know my my neighborhood got evacuated again for the second time, so um, family might have to stay in a hotel for a few days. But as far as you know, the most important thing is people. You can replace property, can't can't necessarily replace people. So one question I want to ask, and then we'll get to Coach Place. Uh, you had to evacuate, but as you mentioned to me, to me earlier, like all the students here, but your home was, was directly in the path. What did you do for an evacuation? Right. So we actually went to my uncle's house, which is uh, a little bit west of Myrtle, uh, but um, for the most part, we, we did just go home, and um, my dad works for the city, so we, we basically had had to 
stay around, you know, so it ended up not being necessarily as bad as they thought it would be, not saying that it's not bad, of course, but I um, actually had a really close friend whose teacher ended up passing away in my county because she didn't close the door when they were using, or they, she didn't have the door open when they were using a generator, so I know, wow. for, I know for a fact that uh, it, was, it was a rough time in Horry County, but I'm glad most people are okay. And you know, I think football is going to be a little breath of fresh air for a lot of people here in the eastern North Carolina and in South Carolina as well, just to get out, get to a game, and just see some football, just to take it off the mind a little bit, because football is so prevalent in the South. Absolutely. Start having some fun again. Yeah, that's right. Here's Coach Tim Blaise. He's in his 11th season here at Chowan, and we caught up with him a few moments ago to give his thoughts on his Chowan football team and today's game. This afternoon, the Hawks played a home opener here as a host McKendry at 11 in Illinois, and I'm joined here by a gentleman who's his 11th year, I believe, on the show on sideline. Coach Tim Place. Coach, it's always good to join you, especially here uh, early in the football season. Yes, sir. It's always a pleasure to meet you as well or speak to you as well. I apologize. So it's always my pleasure. Yes, sir. Coach, 0-2 uh, start, but it comes against two FCS teams. Uh, your thoughts on your team thus far? You know, it's, it's, it's been an odd... You know, I thought we did some good things at Campbell, better than we have in the past. Disappointed in Davidson. Um, you know, I thought we could have gone down there and, and, and maybe competed with them. I, you know, we always expect to win, but, you know, first half we did, we struggled with reference to defensive schematics, went back to base football, adjusted at halftime, came out, played a real good second half. So, and then, you know, the, 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 the issue of not playing shot it is what it is. We didn't get some young men back on campus until, until Wednesday. So, you know, I, I, it's difficult to answer that question. Um, you know, I know we're 0-2, and, you know, we've done some good things. We haven't done some good things. We just, we're playing a very good team today. We need to be consistent in everything we do. Coach, you're talking about this time off. You've been afforded with somewhat of an open date, I guess you could say, something you haven't dealt with much here at Chowan. I know you want to play that Shaw game, but it, has this been a good or bad kind of open date for you? It really wasn't an open date. It was because usually an open date, you can be around your right. team, you can practice, you can do this, you can. I mean, we, we, we had to clear the campus on Tuesday. Right. So we weren't around them. As I said, we didn't get some back until Wednesday of this week. Um, so that's been a challenge, but uh, in the scheme of things, we get it. We got it pretty easy. So if we were complaining about it, nobody would care and nobody would listen. Coach Mike Babcox uh, really got it going up in McKendree. It was seven and four a year ago. But the coach of a quarterback who can really spin it and reach Metcalf. Yeah, he's, he's very good. They, not only is he good, they have receivers that are good. They do a lot of they do a lot of good things. It'll be an ultimate challenge for our defense. Um, so yeah, they're, they're very good. They're a very good football team. Coach, how did this game come about? We were looking to... It really came about where Shaw approached us and asked if we can move our game from week four to week three because they had an opportunity to, to play Campbell, a money game. And the only day that was open to them was week four. So they approached us. It was told to me it's nice. It would be nice if we agreed to it. So then we were looking for a game week four, which is an odd concept because usually people are in the conference. That's how it came about, sir. Coach, when you look at their defense, we talked a little bit about their offense being so prolific. When you look at their defense, they lost a lot of people, playing a lot of young people, but got a pretty good group on that side as well. Yes, sir, and that's Coach's background. So, yeah, they do they do a nice job. You know, they're, they're um, very multiple in what they do. They do a lot of moving, a lot of stemming. So just like it's a challenge for our defense, it'll be a challenge for our offense. Coach, by the time you get it on, have a good one. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was Coach Tim Place as uh, we were watching the coin toss here to make sure we had that squared away. And Sean won the toss, but it further to the second half. So, Robert, we'll get a chance to see this prolific uh, offense that McKendry has. They come in averaging 36.3 point, points per game and an average 452 total yards per game, which is pretty doggone stout when you look at They played Northern Michigan, Kentucky State, and they lost to Bowie last week, 47-44. But 
Metcalf threw four touchdown passes in that fourth quarter alone last week. He gets to do today. And, that, and that's the thing that uh, Choi's going to really have to be, be worried about is, uh, you know, if the pass gets going, can he slip in the run? Preston uh, uh, Thompson is a pretty good runner as well for, for the Bearcats who come to you from Lebanon, Illinois. You've been on some of those bus rides. You've been playing college uh, baseball over the years. You've been on some of those long bus rides, but they had a long one in 15 hours. No, I don't know how other people feel about it, but after about six hours on the bus, I'm about ready to, <laughs> ready to get where I'm going. So 15 hours is quite a stretch. Uh, drop it back deep for Kavisa from out of Illinois. It's going to be uh, Matt Cole on the near side, and I'm waiting for the other guy to turn so I can catch his number on the far side. It appears to be uh, Chase Franklin, but we shall see if I can get, a, get him to turn and see that number a little bit as Chowan's getting ready to kick it away, and looks like Jackson Brooks is going to tee it up for the Hawks. Brooks, a freshman from out of Elon, North Carolina. And Chowan going with the all blue today. I really like their helmets. <laughs> yes. They, this is a, an interesting, it means this is your first year at Chowan. A few years ago, Coach Place uh, let the players design the helmets. And the players designed his helmets. It's a pretty neat logo. I think they did a pretty good job. Yes, yeah, so and Brooks set to kick it away as Franklin and Coles back around their own five yard line, 10 yard line. As we get ready to kick off the third game of the season here for the Hawks. As Brooks will come forward, pretty good boots, going to be fielded by Coles right at the 10 yard line. As he'll make his way across the 20 to 30, got some room to the side to the 40, 45, and finally tripped up and around the midfield stripe. They come across making the play, and maybe Robert saving a touchdown. It's Isaiah off. Looks like McKendry's offense is going to start out a pretty good field position. You know, you already mentioned how prolific they were, how they drive the ball. They only got to drive it halfway down the field now. Cole got pretty good speed. He kicks it all the way back to the Chowan 49 yard line. It'll be first and 10 from that spot. We know four receiver set, two to either side here for Metcalf and the Bearcats of McKendrick. And he'll fake it, comes back with a left-handed pass and is caught right at the 45-yard line on the near side making the grab. is going to be Jalen Williams, but side ball is a little bit different when you look at him, Robert, uh, throwing the football. And you take a look at Metcalf. Metcalf a pretty good size at 6'3", and a senior as well. Second and five. We'll call it second and six. And here's a give up inside to uh, Thompson. He's got some running room and the first down as he makes his way near to the 35-yard line. Thompson, the senior from out of Hazelcrest, Illinois, uh, leads his team in rushing the 261 yard. And here comes that quick pace offense as they get it first and 10 at the show on 35. Give to Thompson again, left side running to the 33. Well, he spun down on the plate, making the stop. It's going to be Marquis Ball with the red shirt senior here for Chowan. And man, this fast paced offense. It Metcalf does look electric as well. He um, started off the game right with a pass down the sideline for about seven yards. Uh, that's how you're going to want to start out, you know. Second and six from the 32. Here's Thompson looking running room. He backs to that side. He got the first down as he lowers his hat. That's a good piece of running by Thompson. Robert, he looked inside the hole close quickly, but he's quick enough to bounce to that side. He made something out of nothing and carries it all the way to the 19-yard line. It is a gain of 13 and another. McKendry first down as they're knocking on the door as they get in the red zone here, near to the red zone. I should say it's a 24, 9 to 19. So it was a gain of, of eight on the play. Here's a pass on the far side. It's caught, spinning around, making the tackle for the Hawks on the far side. It's going to be Barwood again, but it's a nice uh, catch that time by Josh Reve. Reve, the leading receiver with 15 catches so far this year. I believe that the tempo might be getting to the Hawks a little bit. Um, I don't know what they've seen this year with Campbell and Davidson, but McKendry is moving pretty fast. And McKendry now in the red zone. They're 11 for 11 in the red zone this season. Here's Thompson again running up inside, and he near a first down. It's the line to make for the first down was at 14, and looks like he may have it, and he does. He's just inside the 14, so Thompson with a carry of about three yards is enough for the first down. And near the new offensive package in the lineup here for the Kidders, they swap some people out. They say they have it first and 10 at the Chowan 14 yard line. Looks like they're bringing in some of their big boys. As they work to the East Goal here, at legendary Garrison Stadium. Home of Chowan football for many, many years. There's a man going in motion right on right, some movement along the front line. It looked like the left offensive tackle, Austin Hulls, might have moved. 
That was a pretty big guy, 6'7", 275. I'd like to have him on the mound for us, I'll tell you that. He's yeah, a pretty pretty impressive uh, person to be on that hill. And the five-yard penalty is going to be gained first penalty, and it's going to move the Bearcats back to the 18-yard line of Chowan, where they have it first and 15. 12-35 in Canada going this first quarter, no score, but McKendry threatening uh, first and 15 of the Chowan 18-yard line. Metcalf working from the pistol. He'll fake it inside, fires across the middle, and the catch is made by Reveille's in the end zone for the touchdown. Reveille on a little slant route. He cut right inside the defender on the far side, and that was Jamel Hampton, the freshman, and of out of Clayton, North Carolina, so they make it look pretty easy, Robert, as McKendry goes 49 yards in just seven plays. You know, we've been talking about their offense all morning, and it looks like, you know, they are the real deal. And here is uh, Josh Lazario to attempt the extra point. He's 13 for 15 in the PAT department this season. Kick is up, and it is perfect. 7 0 for Kendry Leeds. We're back after this short, brief timeout. This is Show on Football. CU.com. Show on News Herald for providing today's game day notes. Pick up your free copy of the Roto Show on News Herald with game notes at the gate. Also, we'd like to thank today's sponsors, First Citizens Wealth Management, Metal Tech, Taylor Freezer Sales, Subway, McPherson Beverage Company, Central Ford, Roto Show on News Herald, Stitch Count, Carolina Chicken Barbecue, King's Coffee, Rebel Realty, PNC Bank, Integrated Family Services, Southern Bank, South End Memorial Hospital, Farm Bureau, and Benchmark Builders. Back to action here at Garrison Stadium as Lazario, who just put the seventh point on the board in this ball game, set to kick it away. Kaim Perry back deep, and he will field right at the six-yard line. Here's Perry trying to go up through the middle, takes a pretty big lick and bounces off one tackle and falls forward near the 25-yard line. Perry, the freshman from nearby Hertford County High School, who played in this summer's East-West game here in the state of North Carolina, sets up Chowan at their own 24-yard line. We'll get a chance to call the 25 as the Hawks will sit up shop at that spot. Trailing by a score of seven to nothing. Uh, we mentioned it, Robert, off the end during the break. Chowan looked a little rusty here uh, offensively. I mean, defensively. Let's see how they'll maneuver here and execute offensively. Hopefully, they can match up on the offensive side of the ball. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Here's Freeman with the call inside, and Freeman Terrell going to redshirt Jr., who just missed getting a thousand yards a year ago as he ran for. 990 yards, including 308 in that final game at Lincoln. Finds a tough going. He's got a couple of yards off the right side. It'll be second and eight from the 27. Freeman on the season already, 148 yards. He had 109 yards a couple of weeks ago in that loss up at Davidson. So second and eight, quit from the pistol. But Freeman to his left. He'll look to pass for the first time today. Swings it out to Freeman. Freeman got a block on the near side and is able to make his way up near the 30-yard line, and that's about it. As he's from bubble screen. Yeah, he was. He pushed him. Uh, he got pushed out of bounds. He was trying to work off a block that time on the near side from uh, Adrian McNeil, and McNeil just couldn't get the corner here on the near side blocked, and that was James Young who did a pretty good job fighting him off. Freeman gets three yards, so to bring up third and five. Chowan on the season, third down conversions, 35.7%. Witt looks over the defense on his first third down opportunity for the Chowan offense. Looking, has plenty of time, fires across the middle, and just behind the receiver across the middle. That would have been enough for the first down, but threw it just this behind. Often on the play, and there will be a punting opportunity here for Chowan. You know, it looked like you had him open in the middle of the field, just a little bit behind him, touch behind him. So we'll see the punter, John Kite, for the first time. John averaging 43.5 per kick. As long as it's been 53 yards, he's had one block. Back deep is going to be Jaden Brown here for the Bearcats. 7-0 lead. McKendry over Chowan. Good spiraling kick for Kite. Not very strong, but it takes a backwards hop. 
and it's going to be hitting down at about the 43-yard line. And I don't know if you noticed about the first drive, but uh, McKendry did not have a single negative play, and uh, the two first fit plays for the Hawks were right at one, maybe two yards gain, and I actually believe they lost two on second down. So yeah, it's a good call. And, and the only time that McKendry had to work behind the chains is when you had the penalty Absolutely. on first and ten, and they made up with that with an 18-yard pass play. So McKendry with the second opportunity here to begin it on their own 42. Still a pretty good field position here for the Bearcats who made it look easy in their first possession, and they'll give it on the. Jet sweep on the far side, turn it up, it's going to be Cole, and Cole's going to make his way to the 45 where he's ridden down on the play. And it's going to be David Harden with the stop, the defensive end from here on the near side. David, a red shirt senior from out of Glen Allen, Virginia. And Shawan's got some size up front on the defensive line. Looks like they're a little bigger than McKendry. Absolutely. So second and seven now from the 45. Metcalf with the play fake, gonna get across the middle, knocked away nicely by Corn on the far side. A nice play that time by George Parker, the veteran Corn on the far side. He slept it right away from Rave. He just broke on it probably just at the right time to knock it away. That was a very good throw by Metcalf and even a better play by the Hawks. Well, his play action and faking skills is, is outstanding. <laughs> Do you think one of the biggest challenges for this showing defense this year was that back seven? So a third down here the first of the day. Metcalf getting pressured, fires across the middle, it's off the hands and nearly intercepted. It went off the hands of a tight end, Stephen Ledlove, and almost coming away with him with a diving effort was Marcus Devin. Looks like that interception this season. So we'll keep it going here. And set to kick it away is going to be Monty Wokey back deep and making a fair catch effort and hauling it in for the Hawks is going to be Paul Good. Join defense looking a little better in that, that, that time, Rob. They definitely did look a little bit better. And, uh, that punt kind of reminds me of last weekend. I don't know if you saw it. I believe it was North Texas versus Arkansas. Yes. yes. And, uh, <laughs> became pretty famous pretty quickly with the, uh, no fair catch, just stood there and then ran it back for about 80 yards. Wow. Show on second possession will begin on their own 14. They trail here at home 7 to nothing to McKendry out of Illinois here in the first quarter, 10-19 to go. Here's Bryce Witt from the shotgun and gives it or fakes it to Freeman, keeps it himself, comes straight up the gut, and he's got nowhere to go. Ran into the inside linebacker Michael Smith, the 6'1 junior from out of Smithton, Illinois. You know, I was talking to their play-by-play -play guy here on McKinney's play-by-play. Okay, their stomping ground or recruiting stomping ground is Chicago, which is about 45 minutes away, and it's pretty good football over in that neck of the woods, hey, I would you know, say. You're going to have a lot of people to choose from in Chicago as well. You know, that's a very populated city, so. So second and ten now for the Hawks. They'll put a man in motion from right on the right, and they'll fake the jet sweep. Here's Witt's going to swing it out near side, making the grab. It's going to be on Meek Watkins, and Watkins made a defender miss and makes his way up near the 20-yard line. Nice move by Watkins, who has a good speed. And Watkins on the season is the second leading receiver with six uh, receptions on the year. He averages uh, 14 yards a catch. Still looking for his first uh, touchdown, but he made a pretty nice move to get some yardage and get Chowan out of a little bit of hole and give him a more manageable third down here. So they have it third and three from their own 21-yard line. Chowan really looks like they like to stick to the short passing game so far. As this time the running back is coming to line up, it's going to be Brandon Holmes to the right of Whit. They'll flip flop the tight end from out on the right to the left. Here's Whit across the middle, catch is made. Out the open, in the near side, they'll be gone. It's going to be Paul Cook. As he'll try to right race through the finish, he's at the 10 to 5 touchdown to line. 79 yard pass play. Robert, maybe those short passes were setting up the long pass. That time to do it. I believe I called it just in time. It was all part of the plan, you know? <laughs> See, when you're up, in the, you're up here in the press box, you're closer to the coaches. Maybe you can hear them about it. I can't. Absolutely. Great call that time by Bryce Witt. They get good across the middle. And once he got in the open, there's nobody from the far side that's going to catch him. So Brandon Witt just only four touchdowns in the afternoon. And the longest pass of the year is 79 yards. And here's Jackson Brooks, who's four for six on the year to try to tie it up. 
Snap, spot, kick from Brooks, high enough, long enough, and it's right down. Braves go to Hawks Boulevard. Seven apiece, 8.56 to go in the first period. Back for the Chowan kickoff after this short timeout. Here's Jackson Brooks to kick it away. Seven apiece, 8.56 to go in the first period here from Chowan. Brooks with a low sailing kick. It's going to be fairly short. Going to be fielded by one of the up backs up at the 16-yard line. And coming out with it's going to be Chase Franklin. Franklin with a pretty good run. Round his ankles and round him down on the play. It's got to be Brian Bryant. So the third afternoon possession for McKentry, who heads back home after this one and gets ready for Great Lakes Valley Conference play. They'll head to Quincy, Illinois last week, next week. Uh, the Bearcats pick to finish second in the GLVC. Chowan on the season, I believe, was picked to finish seventh overall and fourth in the Northern Division. And, you know, we have been talking a lot about McKendry's offense and how good they are, but, you know, we're college kids, and being a collegiate athlete, you know, you, you hear other guys talking, you hear about the other team, you hear about how good they are. And, uh, sometimes that motivates you a little bit, so hopefully the Hawks got a little bit of chip on their shoulder, you know, come out hot. And, um, so we can see what they can do. Thompson with a carry of five off the right side. It'll be second and five from the 41 of the Bearcats on the side of the 50-yard line. Here's Metcalf chopping straight back. No play fake this time. Has a man open down to this side, but overthrew him. He had a man breaking over. That was Jalen Williams right in front of the show on bench. He got in between a couple of defenders, and but Metcalf had a little bit too much mustard on it. So Chowan looking to force to Bearcats in this second consecutive three and out. And McKendry played a pretty tough Bowie State team last year, who Chawan is pretty familiar with. I believe last year they lost to him 47 to 41. 44 last week, yes. And uh, they have a great quarterback as well, as well in Amir Hall, and we'll see him down the road. A flag on the play. Here's the catch made by Reve for the first half to the Chawan 49, but we have a flag that came from the near side. And let's see what it's going to be here. We'll see what this flag is going to be. Uh, head official today out of the CIAA. It's going to be Harold Drumheller. And we'll see what Harold's going to indicate to us here. So McKendry with the first down. Yeah, evidently yeah, he called it off. He called it illegal formation. That's normally against the offense. Maybe it's against show on. I'm not sure. I didn't know you could have an illegal formation. I believe he said that there was no foul. Okay, I got you. Here's the give to Thompson trying to right side. Show on steep. It strings the night well. That was a nice hit. It was a Keandre Randerson, the red shirt junior from out of Jacksonville, Florida. He transferred from Jacksonville University with the play. Gain of a couple on the play. It brings up second eight here for the Bearcats working at the Chowan 47 trying to break this seven all time with 7.45 to go in the first period here from Garrison Stadium. Metcalf looking to pass on, on the second down has his man to tight end Cole and Cole maneuvers for the first down. Cole has those quick feet you got to really respect him Robert we saw him on the opening kickoff he had some wheels and Chowan just kind of caught him up inside the gain is to the 37 so it's a gain of 10 and another McKendry first down. You know, we've already seen in this game that both sides have a lot of athletes, a lot of athletic kids. 
Speaking of the Bowie State team, they lead St. Augustine 6 0 early in their game today. Here's Thompson up inside, got some running room, busting into the secondary. Maneuvers to the 23 yard line, just went right up the gut here. And it's going to be a big first down, a big run, all the way to the Chowan 22 yard line, 21 yard line. So that's a gain of 12 that time by Thompson. So McKendry getting close to getting in that red zone again. Showing moving a lot of people around and getting them in and out. A lot of people running off and on. Here's a give again, left side. Good running this time by Franklin. He's near the end zone and it's going to be pushed out just shy of the goal line. George Parker making the touchdown saving tackle. But they go, they trade up Thompson's boots size inside and they go with Franklin to speed through the outside and it kind of caught Show on off guard. Looks like they're at about the two yard line. You know, two. Robert, you mentioned there are a lot of people running in for Chowan and this quick paced offense that McKendrick's running is really giving Chowan a difficult time of getting their defensive personnel set. This time Metcalf will work up under center and we got some movement and did the tight end on the far side move. Chowan had some movement along the front but it might have been Chase Kennedy. So false start coming against a bit of a break for Chowan. Yeah, gives Metcalf a little more room to maneuver. Yeah. So we'll see as the ball's moved back to the eight yard line. Well, it'll be first and goal from the eight for the Bearcats. Seven apiece, 6.18 to go in this first period. Here's a give to Franklin again. Started right, cut it back inside, and he'll push the pile to about the four. What I really like about this Hawks team is how physical they are. You, know, you mentioned that the CIAA was a very physical conference. You can see that with the Hawks. They're, they're a tough football team. If you run it straight up the middle, you're getting hit. And you're getting hit pretty hard. And speaking of... CIAA. We'll see one of those teams here next Saturday night. Fayetteville State makes the trip here if things are better than it in Fayetteville this week. Second and goal from the four of Chowan for McKendry. Here's Metcalf, a little swing pass to the fullback, and he might get a catch for the touchdown. And he was just wide open. Stephen Ledlove, the fullback, who plays tight end as well, had ran out of that fullback spot. He just slid in that little gap, Robert. Nobody ever saw him. And Metcalf rolling to his left, throws with the left hand, easily gets it to him for his second touchdown pass of the game. So after Chowan scores, back comes the Bearcats. And they put together a 63-yard drive, impressive drive, and just seven plays. And here is... Basario to try to make it 14 to 7, and he does. 14 7 lead for McKendry, 550 to go in the first quarter. We're we'll back for the kickoff after this short timeout. This is Show on Football. Go see you.com. Ladies and gentlemen, today's game is brought to you in part by our platinum sponsors, First Citizens Wealth Management. Let our brand and Whitley assist you with your investing needs. Contact him at 919 716 2015 today. Southampton Memorial Hospital, located in Franklin, Virginia. Healing begins here. Visit Southampton, Southampton Memorial Hospital at smhfranklin.com. Special thanks to Dr. Frank Taylor, official team doctor for Sean Athletics, and Dr. Anthony Bellaway, team orthopedic specialist for the Hawks. Set to get back to it here with 5.50 to go. McKendrick set to kick it off. Reese Medcamp, highly touted coming in. He's been as good as advertised here already. And in fact, looking at his numbers, he is 6 of 9 already here this afternoon for 125 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Here's Kaim Perry to field it at the 10. Kaim up to the 15, to the 20, trying to get outside. Cannot. Nice tackle coming underneath, making it uh, around his ankle. It's going to be Charles Gordon, the sophomore for Rock for Illinois. These two teams will play again next year, uh, Robert, but it's going to be Chowan, the one that's going to have to make that long trip. And that'll be a nice 15-hour bus ride up to Illinois. <laughs> yes, it will. And you know, Ch Chowan's kind of a different area because we're out almost almost in the middle of nowhere. So, uh, you know, it can kind of be, be intimidating sometimes. You know, you start losing cell service on your phone. People start getting nervous. <laughs> Amen to that. I agree with you. So, first and 10 from the 23. Here's Whitney Pass. Has a man open across the middle. Nice catch is made for the first time in the Ooh. And going to the 44-yard line for the Hawks. And they keep on exploiting that hole up the middle. So the catch is made for the first down. Out to the 44. I do not have a number nine on my 
roster here for Joe Ott. That was a nice move he made. So we'll try to chase that young man down and see who it is. But we'll try to give you that. That is Dominique Floyd. Here's Witt with the pass on the near side. Catch is going to be made. Trying to spin away, dropping the football and falling down on it. For the Hawks is going to be Tory Baker, the leading receiver. Tory is an all-conference performer in the preseason uh, pick. He was second team a year ago. Just never seen the guy his footing going. His footing going here, Robert. Did pick up a yard or two. He had a nice little spin going, but uh, it could have been a lot worse when he dropped the ball. He's lucky he fell right back on it. So the ball is going to make it second and eight after the catch. Beautiful day here in northeastern North Carolina for some college football. Back to mid-80s. Here's Witt going to get away to Freeman. Freeman tried right, cut back left. Look at a flag coming. Might be a holding call coming against the Hawks. Looks like that's what his may be. Freeman has had trouble fighting his yardage. Will be a holding call against the Hawks. The first penalty of the afternoon. So far, the Hawks have been winning the penalty game, but uh, that's the first one. I think McKendry has two. So. But the thing that you look at Chowan, they've been really having trouble with the penalty flags early this season. They've been flagged. That's a 21st flag of the year. They're averaging 111 yards of penalties per game. So that's that's got to drop if you want to be, you know, we productive here. I'm sure that was a huge point of emphasis this week, you know, not being able to be on the field as much as they wanted to. I'm sure they talked a lot about the schematic side of football, and I'm sure that was one of them to cut down on the penalties. And so far, they look like they have only one so far in the first quarter. So uh, This penalty is going to move it back to the 36-yard line, so penalty of 10 yards. You know, you, you you have a look at, at penalties, and I'll give you my take on it after this second and 20 now for showing from your own 36. I was standing by seven. They set up the screen to Freeman on the right side. He's got the blockers. Yes, he does. And he's got some running rooms. He stumbles his way up near midfield. I think he's going to be knocked down to the 48-yard line, making the stop and fighting through those blockers with Jason Bennett. Boy, he had a convoy in front of him, Robert, as you said. You know, that's, a, that's enough to get the penalty yardage back and a little bit more. So it's going to be 11 yards on the carry up to the 47. It's going to make Chowan look at third and seven from that spot. Much more manageable than third and 20. Fourth and four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Been an action back first quarter. We've seen three touchdowns already. Quit again from the pistol with two guys in the backfield with him, but he'll throw it. Has Freeman out on his right. Now dumps it across the middle, and it's going to be intercepted. He was trying to force it on the far side to... I meet Watkins and stepping in, making the interception is going to be Jason Bennett, Jr., the junior defensive back out of Peoria, Illinois. And so McKendrick has picked up the interception, and they will take it over at the Chowan, or their own 45-yard line. Chowan had been looking up the middle a lot for pass plays, and right there it came to bite him. Right up the middle, no one was open, forced it. McKendrick comes away with the ball. So for Bryce Wett, it's his fifth pick of the season. The sophomore out of Dick Woody, Virginia. Wow. So McKendrick with a seven-point lead and got the ball back. There's Metcalf across the middle, right through the hands of Reve at Chowan's 43-yard line. Did you say that was that young man's fifth pick of the season already? Fifth pick of the season already. That'll be something to watch out for. Yes. So where he's coming off a year away through uh, a year ago, had a great season a year ago. He's coming off a week where he was 23 for 35 and 302 yards and three touchdowns at Davidson. But last year he threw, he had 12 interceptions a year ago as a freshman. Here's Thompson on the left side, and he's in the Chowan territory, and you're first down. You know, it's good that he played a lot last year. That'll give you a lot of experience. You know, you'll cut down on those interceptions and, um, you know, be able to excel. Uh, so it's enough for the first down as they move to sticks as the ball's been in place at the 45-yard line of Chowan for McKendry. Once again, Metcalf working for the pistol. With a four receiver set and tops into his left. Here's Metcalf, quick pass, far side catch is made by Rafe. He eludes one defender, still on his feet, and gets hit and knocked down hard at about 39. Stop's going to be made on the far side by Brian Bryant. And so it's going to be a second and four here. They just kind of... You know, just kind of move down the field with ease. Slice and right. dice. They yeah, really do. A little bit and then go for the home run ball. Yeah. And we got a whistle Another before we can get going. And let's see what the deal is here. 
And as an indication, it's going to be a false start. Third of the first period here for the Vistas out of Lebanon, Illinois. You know, Coach Brooks came in, and this is his sixth year. He's, he's 34 and 22. The team coming off a seven and four season. They picked second in the GLVC, which is the Great Lakes and Valley Conference. University of Indianapolis picked to win that conference race, but there must be some good teams in that league. I tell you, he's he's got this team looking good. Here's Thompson, got the first down to Moore. See Wiggles, and he's way up inside for another first down to the 33. And you know, obviously, Division II doesn't get quite as much coverage as Division I. I've seen Rams Lakes, um, Blue and Black, they're the Lakers. Yes. I've seen them on TV quite right. often, especially as a Division II school. That's pretty impressive. Yes, it is. Here's Thompson getting away from another tackle and another. As he'll make his way into the 25-yard line. You know, Thompson's not very big in stature, 5 0 2 0 5, but the senior's pretty hard running. And like I said earlier, it looks like Chuan has a size game. They're, they're a lot bigger than McKendry, but it might be a little bit tough for all those big men to catch up to the little guys in the McKendry backfield. Just gain of eight to the 20-yard line. A question, 25-yard line for McKendry. Is he operate from the Chuan 25? Now they'll give it to Franklin. He's coming to the game. He stood up right at the line of scrimmage. Nice stop by the Chuan. Good job on the right side of that Chuan defense. And a couple guys, David Harden underneath, along with... Uh, Abdul and you know how announcing works. If you point something out, the exact opposite is going to happen. Amen to that. I agree. So. We've already had point and case in that here early, haven't we, on a couple of occasions. Clock continued to run. A minute and ten to go in the first period. As Metcalf looks to Coach Brooks and his staff on the far side, but it's third and two call at the Chowan 24. And he'll give it inside to Franklin, and Franklin will get the first down, I believe. Yes, he will. Line to make was the 21. Looks like he's going to go down at the 20. As it went right up inside. That's the eighth play in the stride that started after the interception by Jason Bennett of nice little, Brian Witt. Nice little drive that McKendree's putting together. The only thing that's really hurt him this game is the penalties. Coming out of the lineup is going to be Tyler Brimbury, the all-conference preseason pick. Gentleman with a great personality, great outlook on life is Tyler Brimbury. Had a chance to interview him a couple of times in the community uh, thing we did a couple of weeks ago. He's a nice young man, very good young man to talk to. Here's Franklin again. He'll make his way near the 15 going off the right side. Looks like a, about three or four hauls. Stop's going to be made by Tamari and Moore, the freshman out of Dale Valley, Texas. Second and four now at the... And they're just going to let the clock run out. And they will. And that's the end of the first period. It's been owned by Metcalf. They lead it 14-7. to seven. We're back after this brief timeout. This is show on football. On go see you home. The score is McKendry 14, show on 7. Do you want to be part of the action here at Show On? Do you believe in Show On Blue? Do you want to help our student athletes and coaches be the best they can in the classroom and on the court? Well, you can. It's easy. Join the Athletic Booster Club, the Braveheart's Club. Members of the Braveheart's Club receive special privileges on game day and at other events throughout the year. All dues collected for your membership go to regular student athletes and coaches. For more information, contact the Braveheart's Club. Ashley Wells Smiley, Braveheart's coordinator at 398 1239 for Sierra. Back to start in the second quarter. It'll be second and four now for Metcalf and company at the Chowan 15. He'll throw it across the middle. He's got it. He's in the checkerboard end zone for the touchdown here, the third of the afternoon for 
McKendry and, and Robert a week ago, Reese Metcalf's got a school record with six touchdown passes in one game. He's halfway there today, and we're one play into the second quarter. You know, he has a really good shot to break that record to get today if uh, it stays at this pace. When you look at his numbers here, uh, 7 of 11 for 170 yards. Yeah, he, he's an outstanding player, and it's not like it's just, just, you know, he had a good game last week. He consistently does this. Yes, he does. So they're waiting to... No, Chuan's been getting a nice little push off the edge. Well, not that yeah. time, but. <laughs> yeah. Here's an uh, extra point attempt by Lazario. It's good. It's 21 7. 21 7 as the Hawks fall. I got to re update here something. I, I said that wrong. Metcalf is, was 7 11 for 62 yards. They have 120 for total yards, but I'm quite sure you had more than 62 yards passing. But nonetheless, as we look at the first quarter numbers, uh, Chuan with 125 total yards, uh, McKendrick with 107, 170, but Robert, we talked so much about the pass and Metcalf, look at the numbers here. 16 rushes for 108 yards right. by this team from uh, McKendrick. They got a great balance here with the passing and the rushing. You know, the quarterback's always going to get all the credit. You know, that's the way football is made, but uh, their running game is very strong, too. It looks like they're a very strong team all around, and um, we talk a lot about McKendrick, but the Hawks do not look bad. It's kind of a little bit of a slow start, but you know, they got a bunch of athletes on their team. They got a quarterback with a little bit of experience, and their defense has got some size and is playing pretty well. You know, they've given up three touchdowns, which is obviously not great in the first quarter, but they're starting to get a hold of it, and uh, hopefully we'll close this gap a little bit. And here's the kick now. It's going to be Perry again to field it. Kain from the seven. That's it. Head back up the middle. They get driven down and knocked down at about the 23-yard line. Curry's a young man that I covered in high school when I was just down the road here at Hertford County. He played over at Hertford County High School. Young man had a terrific career running the football. Pretty good return this time. Sean's going to set it up on their own 24-yard line. It must be nice to go to school about 40 minutes away from where you live. Uh, so, Joe, I will have it first and 10 at their own 24-yard uh, line. As they'll set up shop here, trailing 21 to 7. Let's see if we can get the ball moving a little bit. Here's Whit. We'll put a man in motion. That's good and from out on the right. He'll circle around behind the defense. He'll give it up inside. Good. Uh, thought it was going to be a good run here by Michael Offit, who was the second leading rusher a year ago. That, he had a huge hole, but he closed quickly. What a great uh, effort from the secondary that time by Jaden Brown. He came out of nowhere and closed that gap quickly when it looked like Offit had a big uh, game coming in front of him. He tried to make a nice little cut, but uh, McKendry was all over it with a beautiful open field tackle. So second and nine now for the Hawks, who trailed down by 14 here at home to McKendry. Trying to avoid to go in three. Here's Offit again. And he's got spinning away from one tackle, but can't get away from another. Was penetration this time by Justin Kimmons and really forced off it to slow down. It was cleaned up by a couple of his, his teammates on the play. And Choi going to work behind the stick here on his third and 12. Was that not the exact same play reverse? It, it looked like it. <laughs> it looked very much like it. You know, usually you'll go back to back plays whenever they work, but uh, the first one didn't work very well. And straight back to it. It was an interesting tactic. Choice went awesome. for three on the afternoon and third down converges. He's looking at third and 12 here. Line to make for the first down. So up at his 34. Went looking to pass. Four-man rush. Pockets collapse. He dumps it off over the middle and off it couldn't handle it. Probably a good thing he did because he had absolutely nowhere to go and coming in uh, closely was Charles Gordon. So Choice with a three and out. They really didn't need one and McKendry already leading 21-7 is going to get it back with pretty good field position as John Kite they're putting you to come on here for Chowan. And the Bearcats pinned their ears back a little bit on that one, brought some pressure after the Hawks. Chowan's got one yard rushing thus far. Kite with a high sailing spiral kick. Going over and making a nice fair catch for the Bearcats is going to be Blake Benoist, the 5'10 junior from O'Fallon, Missouri. And so here's Reese Metcalf and that offense coming back on the field. I think Chowan stopped him once today. They were three for four getting it in the end zone in their four possessions in the first quarter. And they lead it here 21-7 with 13.26 to go in his first half. 
Nick Chowan at home next Saturday night as they will host Fayetteville State for Community and Club Day here at Chowan. Our airtime 545 will kick it at 6 CIAA action. Fayetteville State's had two weeks off. Here's a pass, and Revae's got it again. He's got a first down up near the 50. Revae and, and Metcalf have a really good connection. They're running that slant. Choice just having a difficult time, Robert, uh, defending it here. You know, they're not being too pretty about it either. They're just doing simple, you know, simple plays, and he's just hitting the open man. It's a game already on the 14th to the Chowan 49. A little pass, far side's Cole. Cole with a block out in front of him. He slips another tackle down the far side. Cole's at a great speed and he's finally going to be forced out of bounds at the 25-yard line, making a touchdown saving tackle. It's going to be Marcus Devitt. We saw Cole in an opening kickoff flashing pretty good wheels, and he flashed it in once he got outside. And, man, he came close to taking it to the house. You know, they really like to do that little bubble pass to the side with him so he can get out in some open space and just take off, show that speed. Well, in two plays, McKendrick's gone from their own 37 to the Chowan 25 with Everett first and here. Here's Thompson getting the call. And Thompson, who in that first quarter ran for 72 yards on 10 carries, is going to get move the football about three yards to the 22 to make up second and seven. You move we're talking about the balance here in this first quarter for the secondary offense, rushing and passing. Chowan had one yard rushing and 124 passing. Right, that, that's a tough stat, you know, uh, one yard rushing. It's a lot because of the negative plays, you know, negative plays. They've had some good runs, but uh, a lot of one to two yard runs and then a couple where they lost. Second and seven, they'll give it away to Jericho Johnson, who's got it for the first time, and he's going to be stopped maybe shy of the first down. It'll depend on the spot. He may have it. He does have the first down, says the official on the far side. First time we've seen Johnson, the 5'10", 215 pound sophomore from Barbanas, Illinois, I believe that's how you pronounce it. And you see my teammates over there on the chains. Yes. Nice that the whole athletic community works together here. I really like that about this campus. Back in the red zone again for for McKendry, and they give it up inside this time to Johnson. He is smothered under, and he has nowhere to go. Maybe the first time a loss of yardage. And tackle's going to be made up inside by Jones. Dre Terry and also Jaquin Pearl, the red shirt senior from out of Sebring, Florida, transfer from Bethune Cookman. And when the Bearcats try to run it up the middle, they have not had a whole lot of success because of Chuan's size up the middle. So here's a second and 10. Here's Metcalf to fire, has plenty of time, and it's going to be incomplete as they were trying to get it far side to Jalen Williams, and he was really battling the corner on the far side, Josh Berry. I thought it was scored, scored Berry was going to get Josh defensive pass interference call on because they both had their hands on each other, but fortunately it didn't come that way. They definitely lit a little bit of a hand fighting ride on that one. Once again, perfect three for three in the red zone here for Met, for. McKendry today, they have it third and 10 now with the show on 15. Here's Metcalf swinging it underneath and a little nice catch and short of the first down by about five yards is going to be Jace Franklin. They run a, just a little flank of screen out on the right. And Choi covers it up nicely and it looks like the field going unit is going to come on. Lasario, who is two for three this year, as long as it's been 36 yards, and he'll, this one will come off the right hash from the 17-yard line. So it'll be a 27-yard attempt by Lasario. Snap, spot, as area comes forward, he kicks it up and kicks it right through the upright for a 24-7 lead here for McKendrick over Chowan with 10.35 to go in the first half. We're back for the kickoff after this short time out. This is Chowan Football and Go to your Hawks.com.
Rosario's second, third field goal of the year. 27 yards is given McKendry a 24-7 lead here at Chowan with 1035 to go in the first half. Kyan Perry's been a busy guy at returning kicks, and he'll get this one from the five. Coming up inside, gets tripped up. He couldn't get away from a guy who came forward and fought off a block and upended him, and that was Deion Norfleet. You know, he, I was listening to Coach Mike Babcock's video conference about this game earlier today, Robert, and he said, you know, the thing he was concerned about is not is the breast lag, and it took him two days to get here. He was worried about his team, you know, having tired legs, get here. They look like a much fresher team here than Chowan does here today. They absolutely do, and, you know, I, I got to credit some of that to the hurricane on the Hawks' side. You know, not everybody was, was back here. Like, he, like Coach said, um, you know, they didn't have some kids back until Wednesday. That's a really quick turnaround for a collegiate game. Here's Whit running for his life. Now it's going to fire deep and catch it. Did he get his feet in bounds? He did not. Amit Watkins almost came over with a great catch on the far side, but give credit to Bryce Witt. He was cornered up, rolled to his left, fought off a couple of tackles, and somehow Robert against his body threw that ball on the money for about 40 yards away. For, unfortunately, Watkins couldn't get his feet down in bounds, and the pass is incomplete. You know, that just looked like one of those flat, or, uh, backyard book, football games where, you know, you just run around, scramble, and chuck one. And it was a really beautiful catch, just couldn't get the foot down. So Chowan with a second and ten. Hawks on a 17-point deficit here at home. Freeman back in the lineup. He's to the left of Witt. And they'll fake it to the rail, swinging that far side. Watkins has got it. And he gets a nice block out in front of him. He comes back to the middle. Oh, He's got a first down out to the 30. What a move. And he had a great block on the far side from Tory Baker that sprang him loose. A wide receiver on the outside. What a block there by Tory Baker. And Watkins has some great wheels, and he'll make the catch and run of 14 yards for a first down out of the 30. And that one needed that first down in the worst way. Looks just like to get that defense some rest here. Looks like the Hawks are running a little bit fast right now. Yeah, here's Freeman getting the call, trying to left side, cuts it up inside, and makes his way to the 35, maybe 36. As Terrell, the young man who is in his... Red shirt, junior year from out of Leonard Town, Maryland. And makes his way up to the 36. That's the longest run of the day by Chowan. It's six yards. It'll bring up second and four. Chowan said that troubles here today running the football. They were minus one rushing the football prior to that run here by Freeman of six yards. Chowan with a three-receiver set with a tight end on the right. Here's Whit with a long snap count this time. And he will look to pass on first time. Four-man rush. Wings right to Freeman. Freeman's got it, tries to get right to the defender, does so, has some first half, stumbles through, runs over the center, runs over the middle, and goes out of bounds. Freeman showing that fruit strength of his, 6'1", 210 pounds, and there's a lot of muscle in that body. And, you know, I couldn't tell who he ran over out there, but he did not have much trouble with that at all. Just steamed roll over. I don't know if that was a defensive back or safety over there, but did not bother him one bit. It's a gain of 20 to the... Bearcat 45, 850 and counting. Bearcats leading here at Chowan 24-7. Went to throw again. Steps up in the pocket. Wheels and fires to Watkins. He makes a diving catch up the 28-yard line. The Hulk put a nice little drive here together. And he needed him, Robert. If nothing else, they needed to get our defense off the field. Absolutely. Our kids were really winded, and it really started with that interception, and it seems like Choi just couldn't get off the field. This is a good drive that Choi needs to get something out of, but nonetheless, they're giving this Choi defense a little bit of a break. Choi's going to insert uh, Brandon Hughes in the lineup to replace Freeman. You know, a lot of folks don't realize how much conditioning goes in to a team like McKendry that uh, just runs such a high-paced offense. Here's Hughes with the first time. He'll try the right side as he'll scramble his way to about the 23. Stop's going to be made on the near side by Kayshawn Spraggins, the linebacker, the freshman out of St. Louis, Missouri. Coach Babcock was talking about his video conference. This may be his best freshman class. And he's saying a lot of his kids are playing defense. They've been pretty impressive as well to some of those young freshmen he has. After losing uh, the player of the year, defensive player of the year last year, had a young man who was an All-American was Austin Welta. I guess I, I hope I pronounced his name, name right. Second and five, Hawks at 23. Here's Hughes, a nice over the left side. Hughes is going to get close to that first time marker. We'll see exactly where he got the forward progress with this play as Hughes running off the left side. Brandon Hughes, the 
Young man from out of Clayton, North Carolina, transfer from Concord University. He is a redshirt sophomore. He's going to be able to find a football link shy of the first down. Troy started this drive from their own 16, and he moved it here in seven plays as the official is going to take a little bit of a talk, and let's see if they're going to take a look at it. I think Coach Tim Place might have requested a measurement here as we see the official, CIAA official was signed to this game here, and it will bring the chase in. Harold Drumhiller is our referee. The umpire is Leonard Van Hoos. Head linesman Eddie Buffalo. The head line judge is Kevin Golston. Side judge is Azale Stokes. Field judge Frank Trevino, and the back judge is Terrence Jenkins. As they step out to trade, pull out the chains, and it is a first down. Good call by Coach Place to ask for that, ask for that measure. Absolutely, and you know that that's a very bright individual over there on that sideline as well. You know, um, psychology major, isn't that what you said before that the game? Correct. We were yes. talking to him. Right. He's a very smart individual. You know, a lot of coaches are going to go after an exercise science degree, but um, as far as the mental aspect goes of sports, you know, sometimes that's just important, if not more important than the physical aspect. So first to ten of the eighteen of. McKendry, here's Sean getting it to Baker, and Torrey's got it near the 11 yard line. Went rolling to his right, hit Baker on the numbers. Those two combined last year uh, did uh, show up 46 catches and seven touchdowns. Witt and Baker did a year ago. This one's going to get Cho on to the 11. A gain of seven and bring up second and three. Showing in the red zone this season is four of seven. As Witt looks over the defense with Freeman back in the lineup to his right. Two receivers to the left with a tight end on the right for Joan. They'll fake it to Freeman. Witt will pull it down and run with it. He's near the end zone. He's in for the touchdown. Why split off the right side. He'll take it in from 11 yards out. Joan back on the board at 24 to 13. And that drive uh, with 84 yards and eight plays was very impressive, Rob. And Chihuahua needed that, and they looked really good on that drive. Looks like they got their feet back under them a little bit. Now can the defense get their feet underneath them and try to slow down McKendrick? You know, the Hawks really look like they're busting off some of that rust that they had and looked really good. Looked really good. Here's Brooks to attempt it out of the hold of Connor O'Brien. Oh. And a bad snap. And this is going to be Brooks that's going to get smothered under back uh, near the 20-yard line. It's both uh, Brooks and O'Brien trying to pick it up in a bad snap and uh, they couldn't hold a snap and Chowan uh, fires a blank here on the extra point but the Hawks are with 11 at 24-13 with six and a half minutes to go in the first half. We're back after this short timeout. Are you looking for a healthy meal after today's game? Well, head to Subway located on Main Street in Murfreesboro. They're open until 11 p.m. tonight. Try their sub of the month with a new chicken and bacon ranch smell. Subway remind all fans to eat fresh. And are you looking for a new or used vehicle? Try Central Ford in Onoski, located on Memorial Drive. Central Ford specializes in new Ford auto sales and also has an abundant used inventory. Need repairs or parts for your current vehicle? Try Central Ford. They can help you with all your vehicle needs. Call 866-415-8856 and ask for Nate, the gas man, White. Here's Jackson Brooks to kick it off. Chowan down with 6.31 to go, 24-13 in this first half. Good kick by Brooks. Going to go in the end zone, back side the end zone, and that's your best weapon. Says this will be the worst start of the day here for McKendry to start on the own 20-yard line. Absolutely. He almost kicked that one off the hill. Right. Robin, uh, you play baseball here at Chowan. You transfer here from North Carolina West and get a chance to plug this baseball team. Got a little bit of a, a scrimmage coming up tomorrow. What can you tell us about it? Yes, sir. I, you know, I, I've really loved the program up here, really 
enjoy the coaches and all the boys. I, I really do love it up here. Uh, we're just taking on Paul D. Camp tomorrow in a scrimmage, you know, get to knock some of the rust off and uh, maybe get some possible recruits in here, you know, from junior college, see, see what they have. So be a nice little way to start off the playing season for the fall. We've been doing a lot of inner squatting. It's nice to see somebody else with another jersey on, you know. I, yeah, I spoke wrong. So he, had, he had 25 in the first play. Metcalf's going to hit uh, on the far side. going to hit uh, Jalen Williams and coming up making a nice play. Knock him down. Keandre, Keandre Randerson at the 30-yard line. Gain of five. It'll bring up second and five. Here's a give up inside and a first down and more coming as, uh, to the 40-yard line on the carry. It's going to be Jericho Johnson. And that's going to be another first down here for McKendry, who's quickly back to the line of scrimmage. That's a gain of 10 on the play. And he'll give it to him again. It's same play, and he pushes forward to about the 46. And McKendry really looks good running the ball. You know, they've got that high pace offense. They've been slicing and dicing a lot, throwing to the outside, but now they're starting to have a little bit of success running up the middle, and that might not be good news for the Hawks. And, you know, you t we talked about Chowan looking much bigger up front, but this is a good offensive line that McKendry has working here against Chowan. Second and four now from the 46. Once again, same play, same result, near first down as Dre Terry is going to ride down Jerry Coo Johnson up near the 50-yard line. They will move the chains. Another first down here for the visitors from out of Illinois. To lead here at Chowan, 24-13 with 5.08 to go in the first half. All spotted might at midfield. Flight a color combination of their uniforms. Uh, purple pants with a gray stripe down the side. White jerseys, purple humans, and the purple headgear for the Bearcats of McKendrick. First and 10 from the 50. And here's Metcalf. Play fake across the middle, incomplete. As they were trying to get it across the middle, to the wide receiver, Stephen Times, to be honest, was being held. Yeah, I, I was about to say, uh, <laughs> looked like there was a little bit more than hand fighting going on right yeah. there. It looks like he just kind of yanked him back with his hand and nobody saw it. And he, he was trying to sell it to the official on the near side, and Josh Berry was holding him, but didn't come up with the sale at all. So back to the 50. Looks like the ball might have gotten moved about a football <laughs> Uh, closer uh, to the end zone here. And Metcalf with a high snap. He'll fake it. Fires across the middle. Goes back to Rivera again. He's got it again. That same little slant across the middle. And it's good for 18 yards. Oh, let's see. Yeah. So it's seven, 16 yards down to the 33. 17 yards to the 33. And that was a great catch. He had a defender draped all over him. And the defender got the hand on the ball and he still held on to it. And it looks like he's been over on the sideline. Looks like he got a little bit banged up on that play. From the 33 of Chowan, here comes McKendry again to hand it inside to Jace Franklin. And Franklin's going to fight for about three yards to the 30. The interior of that Chowan defense making the stop. McKendry has a great, looking at their athletic program, uh, Robert, they have water polo, they have hockey. Uh, they have a lot of different sports that a lot of schools don't have. They have 3,500 students. But, you know, just being in the outskirts of Chicago, you know, enables you to do some other sports like that and able to recruit the people that can play them as well. So second and seven from the 30, and they'll give it to Franklin again off the right side, and Chase Franklin continues to pass the show on defense up front. And, and, you know, obviously up north you're going to have a lot more opportunity to play. You know, sports like hockey, we don't really have that down here. But uh, something that I thought was pretty interesting that, you know, when I visited the campus, I actually saw somebody wearing a Chuan bowling shirt. Yes. And we actually have a women's bowling team. I haven't got to see them play yet. I don't know when they play, but definitely something to check out. You don't see that very many places. That you don't. Third and three. Here's Metcalf to fire, and it's caught for the first down, and a nice grab after he took a pretty big hit. And he paid up the late hit. Yes. And this may be a targeting call here. Let's see. Uh, but making the catch is going to be Jalen Williams. The official came from the far side really late to throw the call, throw the flag. Is this going to be a late hit, or is this going to be a targeting call? Not sure. It can be a late hit, but maybe targeting on the play. I didn't catch who the guilty party was for Chowan, but the flag's lying at the 15-yard line. And I'll tell you what, there was three Hawks that all hit him pretty hard. Yes, they did. And the officials will confirm. Our head official, Mr. Harold Drumheller, will step out and tell us that the... See if we can pick him up with our mic here outside. Yeah. 
and the player, I believe they called it. it is it Trey Terry? If it is, he's been ejected from the game. So he'll have to leave. So Trey Terry gets called with a targeting call, and he's done. The leading tackle on this team. First and goal for the 10-yard line. Here's Franklin off the right side, and Franklin's near that touchdown marker. Did he fumble the football? Choi said he did. And it's Jerome Hawkins. It. That's a huge play for the Hawks. It really is. That was Jericho Johnson. Especially after, after, after having their leading tackler ejected from the game to come back with a turnover. Looks like it's about the one-yard line. That's yeah. huge. And I think the guy who recovered it on the far side was Josh Berry. That was Jericho Johnson on the fumble. He fumbles at the one-yard line. So Chowan down 24-13 with three minutes to go in the half, 99 yards away from putting another score on the board. We'll see what Bryce Witt and company, the sophomore quarterback, can do here. And like you, uh, Robert, that is a huge turnover that Chowan's just forced. And, you know, just going back to that uh, targeting call, I don't know if you could see it, but I know from my angle, I, I really couldn't see anything that would – that would lead to him getting ejected. Um, there's also a giant pole in my way. Right, so. I got you. Here's Freeman on the carry right up the gut, and Terrell trying to fight for some yardage. Maybe a couple out to the three-yard line. Several so tackles underneath for the Bearcats. That's Chowan's eight turnover they've forced this year. They have forced five fumbles now and have forced three interceptions. The gain is out to the four, so gain of three, second and seven. Chowan from their own. Four-yard line. Here's where you don't want to make a mistake here. And Freeman's got it again. And Terrell's got the first down, busting up through the middle. Freeman out to the 16. Quick hitter ready to go. Jordan's starting to get something from the running game here late in this first half. Absolutely. And that gets him out of the shadow of the end zone. That's going to give him a little bit more room to breathe. Maybe spread the field out a little bit, pass it side to side. So a first down out of the 16 on a 12-yard run by Terrell Freeman. Here's Witt to pass on first down. Oh, he has good fight open. Great pass. Got it. A juggling catch out of the 47-yard line. What a catch. Here's a near side by Paul Good. Great pass, great catch. I went with a guy, uh, Robin, you would love to say it, and you'll hear me say it many times. I went with a guy that told me, told me this one time. He was wide open as a $2 shirt. Man, he makes the catch up to the 48-yard line. Chowan really starting to roll a little bit. Yeah, and here's Whit now. Has Chowan at the 48, first and 10. 154 to go and a half. Hawks down by 11. Whit with plenty of time here. Here's him the flag, a holding call. And the pass going to be complete. He's not going to score it, but this is coming back. I think there'll be a holding call against Dale Chervin, who was working against the defensive tackle. Let's see. And he was working against Peyton Lincoln. And it's a holding call here. Is anytime you you pull a guy down, it's going to be a holding call. They'll catch you, get you every time. You can hear some of the Choi people down below us disagreeing with Harold Drummiller, the head official, who threw the flag right. What happened right below him there? Absolutely. But anytime, Robert, you can see it week in and week out. If you're an offensive lineman and you basically go down with somebody with your arms on them, you're going to get whistled every time. Now, I'll tell you what, offensive linemen have a tough job. You know, you're not going to get a lot of love down there. But uh, when you get holding called against you, then you're kind of the scapegoat, you know? But Sean, uh, on the day, they've been uh, penalized now for this is their fourth penalty of the afternoon. And that erase about a 47, 48 yard yeah. that and game. When you look at, and that's another thing, it's a 10 yard penalty on the field, but it's really more than that when you lose a 40 yard pass play. Absolutely. So here's Whit to pass on first and 20 in. Here's good in traffic with the catch near a first down. It looks like he's starting to feel it, but he's connected with the last three passes. Now, given that one was a penalty, but it was a great, great ball downfield. Hawks needed 20 to get 20 yards and about three inches and get the first down at the 43. This drive started after that fumble recovery by Barry at the one-yard line. Here's Whit again, the pass on first down from the 43. Looking deep, looking for all of it. Tory Baker's out there, he's got it. The flag coming. He's in the end zone for the touchdown, but hold everything. Now they said he got out at the three-yard line. 
This going to be offensive pass interference, a push off, or what? Let's see. Baker got behind the defenders on the near side. There's a flag laying right where he caught the football. I thought he got in, Robert, but he marked him out at the three. And the fish is going to confer. Let's see if this one's coming back with the like defensive pass interference. And it's going to be against McKendry. And a sigh of relief on our side. Yes. Absolutely. Witt, would, he had, Witt had Freeman wide open in the flat here on the near side, but he did not look at him. He wanted Baker on the near side. Witt is definitely feeling it right now. That's four of his last passes completed, and I believe three of those were 20 yards or more. And so the Hawks are starting out at about the three-yard line. I'm coming with you. It looked like he made it into the end zone on that diving effort. First to go, 118 to go from the three. Witt in a empty backfield with five receivers set. And he'll put Watkins in motion and take it to him on the jet sweep. Witt standing for the end zone for the touchdown. They take it to Watkins on the jet sweep. And Witt with a nice hole over the left side goes in standing. How about that impressive 99 yard drive in uh, seven plays and most of it was done on the arm of Bryce Witt. You know, they say to play your hot hands. So your quarterback's hot, it's made four great passes in a row. What do you do with him? You run him into the end zone. Looks like Jordan's gonna go for two here, dying five with a buck 14 to go in the half. So this is where that juggled snap earlier, you know, might come back to hurt the Hawks. Uh, they, they pretty much need to convert this convert this two point conversion right here. Joanne uh, is gonna take a time out to talk about this extra point attempt. Hawks down there 24 19. Other games going on in league play today. Lincoln is at Livingstone. Bowie State's at St. Aug. The Elizabeth City Fayetteville State game was canceled tonight. Three teams in action. Fed Virginia State's at Johnson C. Smith. Shaw is at Campbell. Here Coach Tim Place talking about this game. Uh, came about when Shaw asked Chowan to move their game that was scheduled this week back so they could play Campbell and Virginia Union at Winston-Salem. That should be a dandy of a game uh, tonight. That's kind of the game of the week here in the CIAA. Take a look at the standings as far as no undefeated teams left in the CIAA. And we are just in the third week of play here for some of these schools. So uh, it either tells me one of two things. This team is not maybe as strong as it's been in the past this league, or we played a lot of tough competition. You look at Chowan, they played two FCSs, you know, so, and I know Virginia State has played the FCS as well in Norfolk State, so uh, I think it's a little bit of both maybe, but I, I think come conference time, you're going to see a lot of good football in this league. Uh, I absolutely think though, so that there's a lot of rivalries in this league, you know, every game's a tough game, nothing's easy, and uh, wa also want to wish good luck to the men's soccer team and the women's soccer team today as they're playing across campus for Southern Wesleyan. And in the uh, place that will be the future home of Chowan football, by the way. As the plans are, they're raising money now to move the football facility to the soccer and lacrosse complex. They're going to put uh, field turf in there and play football there as well. So here's Chowan going for two. Here's Whitney Pass. Swings tonight near side. Nice catch is made and getting in the end zone. A nice block here on the near side by uh, with C. Lucas and that enable Michael Offit to get in for the extra two. Chowns cut it to three. 24-21 with a minute. 14 to go in that first half. Back for the kickoff after the short timeout. As you listen to Chowns Football on GoSeeYourHawks.com. So the Hawks are with once down 24-7 and scored back-to-back -back touchdowns. And they'll pull within three here. 24-21 with a minute and 14 to go. And here's Brooks to kick it away for the Hawks. Kicking it toward the east end zone. It's going to be returnable here by 
Franklin. No, that's not going to be Franklin. That's going to be Kyle Harris to the far side. And Harris is going to make, make his way up across the 30 to about the 33. The thing we asked Robert uh, during the break, did we get Metcalf to come in too much time here with a minute and six to go? You know, they have that high tempo offense as well, so that's really going to gonna sway things in their favor. Hopefully the Hawks can hold out on them. Um, it's a totally different game right now, 21 to 24. It's going to be a lot different than, obviously, 24 to 7. But you got to think Chowen's going to get the football to start the second half as well. So let's see Metcalf and company headed it at 32. He'll look to pass on first down, cross the middle, and it's away and no good. He was trying to get it to Kyle Harris, and it was tipped away by Marcus Devin. Unfortunately for Chowan, nobody was in the vicinity because that was an interceptable tight pass. You know, Metcalf, we've been talking a lot about him, talking about a lot about how good he is, but that's a very high throw by Metcalf. That's a dangerous throw. You leave your receiver in an open, vulnerable position. He is 14 of 20 on the afternoon for 149 yards. As they set the clock here. 53 seconds and we're second and 10. Here's the first time we've seen a full receiver set with trips to the near side for McKendry. As Metcalf changing the play here on the, he's waiting for the, the official to start the play clock here, I believe. And to hold up everything. I think he was waiting for the play clock to start. You know, Coach, talking about Coach Bab Babcock, he has a, a, a unique history in his, his background coach. He coached at UCLA. He was assistant at UCLA for quite some time. And some doing some of their glory years. So the guy has a great pedigree. You know, experience like that is going to mean a lot at a Division II college, smaller level, you know. That's, that's going to mean a lot to these kids. They're going to listen to somebody that's been there, done that. Yep. And here is, they put 57 on the clock, still to 53. Second down, here's a pass far side, and a nice catch on the far side. In between the defenders and making the grab on the far side is going to be Jalen Williams. That ball was right on the money. You couldn't throw it anywhere else, and boy, Williams was covered nicely, but the two defenders from Chowan led by uh, Brian Bryant, and also on the play was uh, George Parker, but what do you lead it right into Metcalf? Gave it to the 45. Metcalf dumping the little screen far side and making the grab and Preston Thompson. And down and right his ankle holding on for dear life. The Charles inside linebacker Joaquin Pearl. And quickly, McKendry gets a timeout with 40.8 seconds to go. We'll keep it right here. Coming up at halftime, we'll try to catch up the CIAA school board for you, giving the first half stats. Take a look at this Charles football schedule that's coming up. This is the first of four home games coming up uh, here over the next uh, month. We'll talk about that a little bit and get you ready for the second half. Joanne trying to get it to the break. We're trailing by only three, but McKendrick's trying to end to their 24-21 lead. And say a gathering around Coach Mac Bamcock on the far side. Joanne does likewise with Kirk Fun Bargain, the uh, long-time D coordinator here at Joanne on the near side, talking to his defense. You heard Robert say that Joanne baseball has a uh, scrimmage tomorrow against Paul D. Camp Community College from out of Franklin. Second year program. It's nice to have them nearby and uh, get them over. And I know, uh, I think you might know the guy who's pitting, pitching tomorrow for Chowan. Do you, you know that guy? Uh, I know a few guys that are pitching tomorrow. Uh, yeah. We're kind of doing a little mix up and uh, going to get a few innings in. And there's a, there's a lot of other guys that are throwing a few innings. It's going to be really fun to throw against somebody that's not on your own team. You know, you love competing with your guy, against, against your guys, but it'll be really nice to come together as a team and compete with your guys against somebody else. Second and four, McKendry at the Chowan 38. Metcalf working the four receiver set. He'll drop straight past. Chowan has not gotten to him today, and here's the ball that's dropped on the far side. As he was trying to get it once again on the far side to Williams, he had the first out easily at a 25, just dropped it, going to the ground, so they'll bring up third and four here. Only five seconds went off the clock, 35.6 seconds left. Kendry trying to add to their 24-21 lead here in the last minute of the half. See if Chowan defense can get to Metcalf for a change. Could be a big They're showing blitzing, but here they come with it. And they, they do a good job of picking up. Here the man across the middle, wide open to catch at the 10-yard line. Was Dion North and Chowan brought the house and good job by that offensive line to McKendry to pick it up. And McKendry burns him with a big play across the middle. You know, 
the way to the eight yard line. And so he capped it. Panic, you know, he saw the blitz was coming and, you know, he was, re he was ready for it, just found the open man. 28.8 seconds to go and McKendry spends another timeout here at the eight yard line where they have it first and goal at that spot. Join tried to keep him out of the end zone. And I stay within three here. I don't know if you saw this from up here. It was kind of it was kind of after the fact they had already picked up the first down, but uh, it was a defensive back from the Hawks that put an absolute lick on the receiver. You could see his mouthpiece fly up about 10, 15 yards in the air. I don't know if you saw that, but I can see that from here. Yeah, you know the, the thing about it, Norfolk was in the slot on the near side. They had three receivers wide left. He was in the slot, went right down the seam, right down the hash marks, and nobody ever saw him. But Joe never picked him up, and Metcalf was on the money. This kid can really spin it. I tell you, he, is, he has been very impressive. You know, there was a lot of talk, you know, coming up to the game about how good Metcalf was, how good their offense was, and, you know, it really has showed the Hawks have been doing a great job, you know, here, especially more recently in the second quarter, you know, keeping up with their offense, and, and you know, let's see if the defense can make a big stop right here. I'll get you, give you an introduction staff from the left-handed quarterback after this play. First and goal, McKendry on the show on eight. And Metcalf is throwing the end zone. It's incomplete. He just overthrew the intended receiver intentionally. That was his 116th pass robbery this season. He has not thrown an interception as Metcalf, and he's thrown 116 passes on the season. You know, he just seems like one of those quarterbacks, you know, he's going to take what the defense gives him. You know, he's not going to play without himself. He's not going to... He's not going to go throwing balls deep that he's that he knows that he can't make, you know? Second and goal from the Chilean 8. 24.6 seconds to go in the half. Here's Northwood going in motion, and he'll turn on and go back the other way. Metcalf taking the snap. Looking left, firing left, and has Cole in the corner. He's still deploying and incomplete. Jordan, second goal doing a pretty good job. Let's see if they go back to Reveille on that slant, which has been so good to him today. Reveille has a couple of touchdowns catching. Let's see if they go back to him. The big uh, split in here on the near side. Get back to him on that slant. Reveille, six foot four senior from out of Livermore, California. As he split to the near side, along with Northwood and Cole. They have one split receiver to the right. And that's going to be. Jalen Williams, third and goal from the eighth. We'll get a timeout. Coach Mike Babcock has just spent his third timeout, the last of the half. On the far side here for McKittrick. We'll take a quick break, come back for the final 19.7 seconds for McKittrick leading 21. Has his third and goal off the show on eight. Home, health, and life insurance options that are convenient for you and your family. Personal and efficient service for the home team. Contact Melissa Simmons, your local Farm Bureau agent, at 585-0084. Real service, real people, real convenience. Farm Bureau insurance. Also, we'd like to thank Stitch Count Embroidery, who specializes in signs, wraps, screen printing, trophies, plaques, and many more for your advertising and promoting needs. With down-home service and cutting-edge design, Daniel and his crew will meet any of your advertising and promoting needs. Contact Stitch Count at 332-5394. Ask for Mickey. Let Stitch Count help you grow your business or organization. See what Coach Babcock has dialed up here for the backhand. So he's throwing the over the Chowan 8. 24 21 backhand game by the Hawks here at Chowan. The home over. Metcalf to fire again. It's incomplete. They tried to go slant that time to Reveille, and it was covered nicely here on the near side. Like he actually ran. And you know, we were talking about it off the air. It just looks like Metcalf is not as comfortable in the red zone as he is in the middle of the field. In the middle of the field, you know, he can run those slant plays, short, quick routes. You know, he hits his receivers. It almost looks like he's been trying to loft the ball into the back of the end zone, those corner routes. But that one up there, he tried to throw a slant route and just, just was covered really well by the Hawks defense. Here's Josh Lazario on for a 25-yard field goal attempt. Kick is high enough, it is long enough, and it is perfect. 27-21 with 11.5 seconds to go. That's a good stand by the show on defense, by the way. Absolutely. That's a small victory. It is certainly a small victory as uh, McKendry, 27-21. This game has kind of unfolded like we thought. A lot of points scored. But, you know, we talked about and, and, and we made an unusual statement. You can say about any game. But a team that got the best defense in the effort today would win this game. And that's what I feel like it's going to boil down to. Absolutely. Both offense 
defenses are actually moving the ball pretty well. You know, Chuan got off to a slow start, but uh, they've made quite a resurgence here in the second quarter. Once again, coming up at halftime, we'll take a look around the CIAA scoreboard, get you some other scores from D2 football this afternoon, and also catch you up on the first half stats, get you ready for the second half of this one. Alongside Robert Burns and Gaddis Hodges here on GoCUHawks.com. Hope you join us uh, here today for we'll have all the home games here. And then we'll jump right into basketball season. Might even have a special one on the road coming up October 29th. The Joy men's basketball team goes to the PNC Arena to face NC State in an exhibition game. Here's a low bouncing kick, and Kaim Purr is going to feel it on a hop at the 17. And Kaim's going to go down at the 25-yard line. Just trying to make sure it was... Lazario that Chowan couldn't get any uh, return on it. Perry finally got it bounced back to him, and Kaim will field it and kind of make a little something out of it. Chowan's going to probably just take a knee down 27 21 with eight seconds to go. Nice little squid kick by the Bearcats. I bet uh, in the first half, Witt 13 of 71 for 260 yards. Let's see, after he got that interception out of his system, he's been pretty good. He has been phenomenal the past quarter, for sure. He is getting hot. And Chowan will work from the pistol on the first and 10 for the 25. And they'll let Freeman carry it, and Terrell will come right up the gut with it. And he'll make his way out to about the 37, and that's about it. As the first half clock will conclude, Chowan fell behind 24 to 7. They put together a late surge here in the second quarter. And goes to the locker room trailing 27 to 21 here at home against the visitors from out of Lebanon and Illinois, the McKendry Bearcats. We'll take a short break, come back and give you the first half numbers and a lot more here at the break. As we come to you from Garrison Stadium today, as our Metal Texas Muffinsburg School Board reveals Chowan on the short end of a 27 21 score here at the break. We're back after this short timeout.
Champions Day at Garrison Stadium. At this time, we welcome our student athletes that have maintained a 3.0 GPA or higher. There are more than 460,000 student athletes that compete at 24 Division I, Division II, and Division III NCAA sponsored sports in the country today. Shawan University boasts nearly 475 student athletes competing in 19 varsity sports and cheerleading. These students not only represent the university on their respective fields of play with pride, they also are classroom, campus, and community leaders who understand that they are students first and athletes second. In 2017-2018, 233 of the student athletes managed a 3.25 GPA or higher. 65 student athletes were members of the Chowan University Honors College. Please direct your attention to the field to meet our scholar athletes. First, we have baseball. As I read their name, if they'll please um, raise their hand. Noah Cartwright, Tristan Council, Ryan Galicio, Tyler Jones, Trenton Lee, Nick Rose, Tyler Sherrod, Josh Vincent, and Daniel Whitener. Next we have men's basketball. Bobby Grubbs, Brandon Mahan, Boogie Bordick, and Gus Rowland. Next we have women's basketball. Mariah Coker, Jada Lee, Sydney Neal, Danielle Weldon, and Joanne Williams. For bowling, bowling, we have Raven Finley Flowers. Back here at halftime, Gaddis Hodges is with you along with CUHawks.com lines as we've reached the intermission with McKendrick with a 27-21 lead and Joanne was on the verge of Man, getting blown out in this one, and they force a turnover, and they make a late run in the first in the first half, and end up going to the locker room, dying six. Let's give you the numbers here. This has been an offensive-dominated game as the two teams combined for nearly uh, 700 yards in this first half alone. For McKendra, they have 25 rushes for 153 yards, 17 of 28 passing this afternoon for 209 yards for a total of 362 yards in the first half. Joan, on the other hand, has rushed it 12 times for 62 yards. They got 13 of 17 and a one interception performance for 260 yards from, close, from quarterback Bryce Witt. So Joan, with 29 offensive plays in the first half for 320 22 yards, so the two teams combined for 684 yards in this first half. Penalty-wise, Chowan has been flagged three times for 30 yards, and McKendrick three for 15. Uh, both teams have not had to had the punting game working much. McKendrick's punted once, the second possession of the day for a 41-yard average. Chowan has punted twice for 34.5. Time of possession, a big lead for McKendrick, 17 minutes, 46 seconds. Chowan, 12 minutes and 14 seconds. McKendry's converted on four or seven third down opportunities. Chowan just one of four. Looking at the red zone. McKendry's five of six in the red zone this afternoon. And Chowan is two of two. We're back to give you them individual numbers after this short break. Here at halftime, Chowan on the short end of it, 27-21 at home against McKendry. We're back after this short timeout. For women's golf, Garcia Rivera, Anisia Roll, and Emily Stafford. For women's softball, Shannon Buchanan, Haley Cooper, Emma Ray Flores, Miranda Glover, Karen Melhot, Donya Salmon, Kelsey Sontag, Lindsay Stiegler, Mackenzie Taggart, Elizabeth Walker and Carly Wellborn. And for women swimming, Grace Arredondo, Cher Bowles, Jasmine Gibson, Ashley Hernandez, Sarah Hall, Keetra Lloyd, Megan Reed, and Anne Marie Spiker. And for volleyball, Alyssa Bourne, Kayla Gates, Alyssa Hughes, Courtney O'Keefe, and Mila Vinovich. Get one 
more round of applause to all of these student athletes. In addition to having a 3.0 cumulative GPA, many of these students are members of the Honors College. Members of the Honors College at Shumwater Honor issued a special invitation by the provost based on their scholastic achievements. Incoming freshmen must have a 3.25 high school GPA and an 1100 SAT score. Sophomore, sophomores must have a 3.5 GPA to be considered. Member of the Shumwater Honors College, please step forward and wave. Once again, please join the entire Chowan community in recognizing these student athletes for this, their success on and off their respective fields of play. Time here at Garrison Stadium, Chowan trailing here 27 21. You heard uh, PA announcer Scott Parker going over there. This is a Champions Day here at Chowan University, and Chowan celebrating uh, some of the championships from a year ago the Chowan uh, women's tennis team and also the Chowan softball team, the CIAA champions. Chowan women's uh, uh, tennis team won the uh, Conference Carolinas championship. They're being uh, rewarded down below us here. Also, all the uh, student athletes who had high GPAs won the honor roll were just recognized as well. Let's take a look at the individual numbers for the first half. First for the Hawks, Terrell Freeman, five carries, 41 yards. And he got it going in that second quarter that really enabled Chowan to kind of open up their offense a little bit. Bryce Witt, three carries, 13 yards, but two of those carries have been for touchdowns. Brandon Hughes added two carries for 10 yards. Witt spent it in the first half, 13 of 77, 13 of 17, one interception, 260 yards, and a touchdown. Three catches each for Paul Gooden, Tory Baker, Amik Watkins, and Terrell Freeman. For McKendry, Preston Thompson leads away on the ground, 11 rushes for 75 yards. Jace Franklin, a nice compliment along with Jericho Johnson in the backfield. Those two are combined for 13 carries and 76 yards. Reese Metcalf, 17 of 28, 209 yards, three touchdowns. And he has not thrown an interception, like I said, in the uh, four game, three and a half games that he's played now. And he's thrown it nearly 120 times. Reve, seven catches, 89 yards. Williams with three catches, Cole with two, and Norfleet with one. Leading the way defensively, Chowan Dre Terry, the leading tackle with eight in his first half. But Terry got disqualified on a targeting hit late in that second quarter. And uh, it's kind of it was kind of an unusual play. And uh, it just so happened that Chowan recovered a fumble to one yard line a couple of plays later and kind of turned it around. George Parker had six tackles, Marcus Devin and Baldwin with five each. Leading the way, Jason Bennett for McKendry with six tackles. We'll take another time out, come back and get to the scoreboard of the CIAA. A couple of games working. We'll give you some updates from those and give you more here from Garrison Stadium. We return here to break. Chowan trailing 27-21 and you're tuned to go CUHawks.com.
Both teams making their way back on the field here at uh, Garrison Stadium as we get ready to start this second half. Gaddis Hodges, alongside Robert Burns here in the press box here high above uh, Garrison Stadium. Kind of give you some scores uh, here from the CIAA this afternoon. Of course, uh, Chowan trailing here to McKendry, 27-21. Livingstone at the half at home, leading Lincoln. Uh, 16 to nothing, and up in Raleigh, Bowie State leads St. Ogog 28 to 7 and a half. The rest of the games in the league today are at night, and they are, as we speak, uh, Virginia State's at Johnson C. Smith, Shaw's at Campbell, and Virginia Union's at Winston-Salem. So as we get ready for the start of this second half, we know Robert to join us. He had to make a little bathroom run, a little break, and Get ready to start this second half. And Sean's going to get the football to start the second half as Lazario is set to kick it away. Kaim Perry back to even along with Siobhan Harkless. As Lazario will kick it towards the west end zone here at Garrison Stadium. Long time home at Sean football. We'll be back here again next Saturday night. Fayetteville State will make the trip from Fayetteville here. Here's Perry from the five. Kaim looking for some running room and lowers his head and powers his way out near the 32. And we got an injured uh, McKendry player here on the near side at about the 24 yard line. An injured player, a little slow to get up. It's going to be Deion Norfleet. He had a big catch in that last drive when McKendry drove it down and got a 25 yard field goal from Lazario with a minute and three to go. To the lead at 27-21 is he attend Robert to the uh, injured player here down below. What's your thoughts on this second half? And Chowans with an important first start of the offense here in this drive. You know, I think Chawan came out uh, pretty slow the first half, and if they're able to start out at a better pace, you know, maybe maybe get three, maybe get seven off of this drive, or just at least move the ball downfield, I think that put them in a really good position because because the quarterback's been really hot lately, and um, hopefully that will start over again in the second half because uh, defensive-wise, it looks like the Hawks may be a little bit outmatched, but um, offensive-wise, they're just about step for step. So if they keep on moving the ball, I think they'll be in very good you shape. You know, when you and I coached, called to coach Tim Place and then Florida gave, he was worried about the slow start. Here's the pass. Dominic Floyd, tight end over the middle, has it. And he's going to go down at the 30-yard line. So it's starting this possession on their own. 22 as we start the second. I'm always moving left to right here as you compare your computer screen in front of you or whatever you're listening to. It used to be the radio dial, but not the radio dial this time. But computer screen going left to right. And Chowan's got a gain of nine yards out to the 31-yard line, so to bring up second and one from that spot. Hawks now in six as we start this second half. Here's Witt going to get away to Freeman. Terrell's got a big hole up the gut. He's to the 40, to the 45. Running right behind the blocking here on the near side, but Dante Witt, the redshirt sophomore at Raleigh. And Terrell Freeman cut it right back inside the huge hole, and he carries it out to the 45. It's a gain of 14 on the Chowan first down. And this is exactly what the Hawks needed. Witt with a nice pass earlier, started off right, and then a big run up the middle. It was exactly what they needed. So Chowan's quickly moved it from their own 22 out to the 45 in a couple of plays. Witt from the gun, and he'll look to his right. Steps up in the pocket, looks, fires, and it's incomplete. Dangerous, dangerous. And he's pass. trying to get it to Watkins, and the guy who got a hand on was Rico Gibson, Jr., the 6'1 inside linebacker out of Godfrey, Illinois. And I tell you, Robert, you mentioned it was a dangerous pass, and Gibson not got a hand on it, though. I think Watkins had it. But what could have been big yardage? Exactly, exactly. Just just out of reach enough where he couldn't intercept it. Definitely tipped it, but, you know, dangerous pass, dangerous pass. So second and 10 now for the Hawks. Not a huge crowd here today, but a lot of people dealing with some other issues in this state. Here's Freeman right up the gut in the first half. All of a sudden, Choi, which had minus one yard midway in the first half. This running game is starting to gain some momentum. 
and I think it's done by the passing here of Witt. And it's, once you get that balance going, you're a tough offense to stop. Absolutely. And Freeman's been really hot. Two carries so far, both are big games. Yeah, all 11 yards to the 44 of McKendrick. And Witt's going to fake it to him with the play action. Oh, yes. And he'll fire across the middle and throw it short, intended for the receiver on the near side. And that's going to be Rasee Lucas. And he was getting some pressure with Witt that time, and it came from the near side defensive end, and that was uh, Jalen Gaskin. And, but Bryce just kind of hopped it to him. Well, this is, I'm sorry, this this is, is yeah, that's, I'm sorry, I looked at the wrong jersey. But it is, is uh, no, this is going to be uh, Jalen Riley in at quarterback. So Jalen Riley is at quarterback. What is Witt is hurt. So Riley is taking over at quarterback. I believe that's Riley. Let's see, is that 10 or 18? That's Riley in at quarterback. Here's a give near side. Brandon Hughes running the football, and he'll make his way near another first down. Brandon Hughes so looking for Witt on the near side as um, Riley has taken over at quarterback here. And Riley looks a lot like uh, Witt, the quarterback. But looking at looking for Witt on the near side, I don't see him here. That is number 18, that quarterback. It is. I'm sorry. I looked at it wrong. I'm sorry. It is Witt. I said, man, he looks a lot like <laughs> I saw him turn. It looked like a 10 and 7 and 8. You know, his jersey's folded up, and I was kind of thinking yeah, the same agree. thing. Yeah. So first and 10, Hawks from the 33. Here's Witt to pass. Catch is almost made, but couldn't hold on was Rasee Lucas. Actually, might not be a terrible thing that he didn't catch that because it looked like he caught it right. He was going to catch it right at the sticks, and he had a defender all. Over. Yeah, when Witt turns like he is right now, it looks like a 10. There we go. One of these new uh, Under Armour jerseys showing, uh, like the rest of the teams in the CIAA this season, with a brand new uh, uniform contract as Russell's as Russell got out of the uniform business and uh, Under Armour got the contract for the CIAA. So Chowan with new new units. Here's Witt going to dump it off to Freeman. Freeman uh, lowers his head, fighting off block, tacklers and scrambles to the 27 yard line. I believe. And Freeman's just tough. He's running downhill. You know, he doesn't want to be stopped. He's running straight at people. He doesn't avoid contact. He goes after it. 6 1 2 10 for Freeman. Showing looking at a third and five here. Opening drive of the second half. Hawks down six here. You got to think maybe Chowan a two down territory here. Brooks has only tried uh, one field goal all year and he missed it from 32. Chowan with two receivers right, one to the left with a tight end Floyd in the slot on the left. Freeman joins Witt in the backfield. Bryce to throw, and Bryce has got it to Watkins, who can't hold it at the 20 yard line. Would have been enough for the first down as he was smothered under by the corner here on the near side, and that was in defense here on the near side was Charles Gordon Jr., but Watkins had a chance to catch it for the first down. Chowan's going to look at it now at fourth and five. And Watkins will come out. Tiny and Austin Edwards will get in the lineup. Showing on the year on fourth down conversions. Oh, one or two for five for 40%. Can they convert here on a fourth and a short five along four? With the ball spotted at 27 of McKendrick. Witt rolling, took him to his right, looking, looking. Now fires, has a man out of Baker who's got it for the touchdown. Witt just showed enough time, Robert, to hold on to it and allow Baker to get loose. And that connection, which was good with seven touchdowns a year ago, and once he already today, or second, just the first time today, has connected and Chowan has tied this game at 27. You know, Bryce went with the patience. You know, most quarterbacks are going to start freaking out. Fourth down, you know, you got to get rid of the ball. Bryce Witt just takes his time, waits for his receiver to break away into the end zone. Six points. Here's Brooks to try to give Chowan the first lead of the afternoon. Here's his kick, and it's up in the pines and near the lake, and it's good to get you on a 28-27 lead. Back for the kickoff after this short timeout. This is Joy Football. Let's go see you on Scott Alicia Rucker and her crew, and they're ready to help you meet 
future real estate needs. We'd also like to thank PNC Bank, who is a proud Green Bay sponsor. They're located at 137 East Main Street. Let PNC Bank help you with your banking needs. With PNC, make every ATM in the world free. Visit PNC.com or visit your local branch on Main Street today. Sign up for a checking account that works harder for you. Harris away to kick off from Chase Jackson Brooks is showing has taken this open possession in the second half and driven it 78 yards to take a 28-27 lead. Cole to field a line drive kick at the nine. They'll try to get to the near side. Troy's got to keep an eye on him. This young man has great speed. He's breaking loose. Up across the middle goes Cole and he'll make his way out to the 48. Troy appeared to have him cornered up, Robin, back around to 25, and somehow Cole and was able to get loose. The wide receiver, the junior from out of Chicago, is Cole High School, is able to maneuver his way out to the 49. You know, McKendry is just absolutely slaughtering Shawan in the special teams game. I don't think they've had a kick return that's been less than 30 yards. There was one that the Hawks kicked through the back of the end zone, but other than that, 30 plus yards every return. So we get the first look at the second half to McKinney to give him a press a chance and a great carry. He's back in the line up here in the second half. Has a bottle up back at the 45 yard line. And that's a great start for the Hawks. That's, you know, that's what they needed. They needed their defense to come out strong, use that big physical size that they have. And McKendry didn't go backwards very much in the first half. It started off right in the second half. They might have, it spotted him at the 48, so only a loss of a yard. And they had him all the way back at the 45. Terry, who was thrown out in the first half, was just ejected for the first half. Back in the second half. Here's Metcalf flying it across the middle, and the catch is caught, but dropped immediately uh, for the Hawks. Uh, it's going to be uh, Stephen Towns, and he's dropped immediately uh, by Keontae Anderson. The gain is good for five. It'll be third and seven now at the Chowan 47. Remember in that first half. Kendrick was pretty good. They were third down conversions. They were four for seven. Matt Campbell sent three receivers to his left, one to the right. Long snap cut here. Here's McCaff. Metcalf looking far side. Catch is going to be made, but shy of the first down marker. Catch is going to be made by Jalen Williams. As he did the Cardinal said, he did not get the Williams did not get to the first down marker. We're going to see McKendry's second punt of the afternoon. I believe we will. It's going to leave a fourth and a long two now for McKendry. And on to punt it for the second time. It's going to be Monte Wolke, who averages 44 yards a punt. Back deep for Chowan will be Paul Good. And kind of an end over end kick. Gooden calls for the fair catch, and it goes over his head. It's going to be down at the five. That was un unique. Did, did you happen to notice Wolke? He dropped it straight down on his foot. Not flat, but the other way, and he got an end over end. Looked like he did it intentional. I tell you what, he got pretty good spin on it. Absolutely. He kicked it at the point, and it looked like it, uh, when it hit the ground, just rolled right back towards midfield. So, um, so the Joe really defense would have three and out to start the second half. That's certainly a, a key key maneuver for the Shawan defense in the second half. Yeah, you know, the Hawks come out, they score a touchdown, and they have a nice defensive stop. So the Hawks have scored on their last three offensive possessions, have it first and 10 on their own five-yard line with a 28-27 lead with 9.49 to go. Here's Austin Edwards, the tight end, getting in the ball game field for the Hawks. As the Hawks are sitting two receivers left with two tight ends and Freeman in with win in the backfield. Brett with a long snap count. He'll fake it to Freeman, comes across the middle. Catch is going to be made by Paul Good up for about the, to about the 13-yard line. It's going to be a gain of about eight. Makes it a second and two opportunity here for Chowan. You know, you look back at this game, and Chowan was on the verge of going down 31-7, to Robert. 
and McKendrick fumbles at the one yard line. It's been all show on since. Here's Freeman coming up inside. Freeman's gotten a first down as he fights for yardage across the 15 to about the 18 yard line. Coming up making the stop on the far side is going to be Justin Kimmins. The 6'4", 240 pound red shirt freshman out of Chicago. He prepped at Brittany Young High School. Did Kimmins. These two teams will play again next year up in Lebanon. Two year contract for both uh, McKendry and Chowan. First to 10 Hawks out of their own 18. And Witt's going to fake it to Freeman to come right up the gut with it. Witt lowers his head and gets the first down out of the 30. You know, Witt's a big, pretty big guy, 6'4, 225. He, when he comes with a load, Robert. You know, he's he's been a really tough guy. This this second quarter and into the third quarter, Witt's really turned it on. He looks really good. And Whitney Young is also where Jaheel Okafor came from. I don't know if you knew that, but I actually got a chance to watch Jaheel Okafor at, down at the Beach Ball Classic. And very good athletic programs at that high school. Here's Whit going to spring it out to Ward, who's going to throw the pass. Oh, and Baker, and he's got it to the 35. There with it. Who's the defender? And that caught it up and goes down to the 32. To one with a little bit of trickery. Yeah, they put a man in motion, Dominic Ford, the tight end. He stops behind the line of scrimmage and throws the tight end pass to Baker, who was open. The only thing that kept Baker from getting in the end zone is he had to slow up to catch the pass. Absolutely. But a big play all the way to the 31 yard line. So Chowan with a gain of 39 on the play and they have it first and 10 at the McKendry 31 yard line up in front 28-27. You know, I think you hit on it earlier. I think that play really did change the game where yeah. uh, the guy got ejected for targeting, but then they got a fumble the very next play. So, and I didn't realize that you only get ejected for one half that you can come back in the second half. Is yeah. that a new rule? Yeah. That always been? Evidently so is, and Freeman's got six yards yeah. off the left side to make it second and four from the 25. But, I, you know, I heard some talk about it at, at doing it here in the press box during the break and I said, man, I haven't seen that before. So second and four Hawks as they maneuver from the 25 of McKendry. Here's Witt going to fake it this time looking downfield and he's going to get oh. out of the pocket still going to run with it. He's got the first down and goes to the 15 yard line. A little magician work with his feet from Bryce Witt but he looked like he was going down back around the 35 yard line and somehow Makes it all the way to the 13-yard line. Slipped right out of it. You know what really impressed me about that was he felt the backside pressure and just escaped just at the right time. Yeah. Just slid out of that pocket. You know, you make an interesting, you had an interesting ad adjective. You see, he slipped out. It's kind of hard to call a 6'4 guy, 225, slippery, but that's exactly what he was. That was a pretty good, pretty good move there. First to 10 Hawks at the 13. This drive started back on their own five. Here's Michael Offit. He's going to get the fake. Here's Witt's going to pull it down and run with it and make his way near the nine-yard line. That's the thing about Bryce. He does not mind running the football at all. And you know, you don't want to run your quarterback a whole lot. That puts you at risk of injury. But he's a big guy, you know, and if, if they think it can help him running the ball, you know, he's, he's obviously been affected. I don't think he has one running touchdown. So. Yeah, and he does. And he's carried, he had 20 rushes prior to today. Averaging 3.7 a rush, and, and that's you, your sacks taken away from your rush yard as well. So I'm sure he's got more than 73 yards running the football because your sack yard is, comes off your rushing as well. Second and five from the nine yard line. Here's Freeman trying to get to the outside. Terrell cut back at the five. Near the goal line, standing for the touchdown. How about that 95 yard drive for Chowan? You talking about a team that's cooking on the front burner right now? This is Chowan offense. Chowan Four time. consecutive series that they put it in the end zone. I'll tell you what they need to do is just start behind the 10 yard line every time because both the 95 yard drive and the 90 yard drive, they just need to stay back there. They drive all the way down the field. Here's Brooks to try to stick one in the pond. 34 27. 35-27, to go in the third, Chowan. After being behind 24-7 earlier, now up to eight here at home. We're back to the kickoff after the short break. This is Chowan Football and Co. See you Hawks.com.
Shots and for the kickoff. Shawan with back-to-back -back touchdowns to start the second half and have taken the lead up to 35 to 27. And man, it, you, we keep thinking about that one play that turned this game around here for Chowan. They want to verge going down 31-7. And now they're up in front, 35-27. Here's Cole again. Cole's got running room again. He's to the 45. And will step out of bounds just shy of the midfield strike. And he comes on the near side. Cole with a great speed. Man, can he get out and make it happen? Did you expect anything less from the McKendry special teams? No, no, certainly not. So another good starting point here for the McKendry offense. As he'll start from their own 50-yard line. You know, I think Metcalf gets a lot of uh, he gets a lot of races. The special teams brings him up to the 50-yard line just about every time they touch the ball. It seems like against Chawan, so he only has to drive half the field. First and ten from the 50 for the Bearcats. They'll give it to one. They're going to run it back on the near side, and maybe a yard to come in here for Chase Franklin. And they're meeting him right at the line of scrimmage with a pretty good leverage. Jack Pearl on the tackle. Man, this is a good man from Sebring, Florida, makes brings a pretty good thump to him. And somehow or another, Franklin was able to get a yard out of it. He took a pretty good lick here, Robert, as well. And the Hawks are just swarming. It's every tackle, there's three or four blue bodies all on it. So here's Metcalf to the line of from the pistol with a four receiver set. Been that way most of the night. He'll give it inside to Franklin again, and he'll make his way. He'll stumble forward to the 46, maybe the 45, we'll call it. And you know, McKendry's not having a lot of success running the ball up the middle, but it seems like they keep on running it up the middle, up the, up, up the middle. I'm wondering if they're about to go long with the deep ball right here. And that's the thing. We've only seen Metcalf stretch the field like just a couple of times today. So here's a third and five, and they haven't been to Rave lately, right? So let's see if they go to go to him as well. He's lined up on the short side of the field in single coverage. Here from George Parker. Here's the fake inside. Metcalf will let it go. I think it was a, wow, interception, but we I think Chowan might have been offside. Either that or procedure call. That's pretty good. Not pretty good hands. That's a pretty good hand by George Parker on that interception, but it came well after the whistle. That was impressive. That was impressive. Yes, it was. But the penalty is going to be a procedure call for the start against McKendry, and they'll move it back to the 50 will bring up third and 10 from that spot. You know, it looked like the Hawks pinned their ears back. They went after McKendry. Yeah, they were bringing Dre Terry, the outside linebacker. He came on a straight blitz. He got out in the slot like he was going to have double cover with Bay. And he came on the blitz and almost got to Metcalf. It looked like he had a free shot on him right before they blew the whistle. He's up in the line here, and he'll come in on the blitz. And they'll jump it across the middle, and the catch is going to be made by the tight end, but well short in first down. And Chowan that time was able to put some heat on Metcalf, and I think he had to let it go, Robert, a little quicker than he was right. Only a five-yard catch this time by the tight end, Chase Kennedy. And I'll How about Chowan? They have forced two three and outs back to back here in the second half. I'll tell you what, you mentioned earlier how the CIA, CIAA was a physical conference, and you can see it in the referees right here. I don't know if you saw, but he got there a little bit early before the receiver caught the ball, and there was, there was nothing called. It was a ball that's going to be down at the one yard line. And once again, I, their punter, Wokey, does a great job. I've never seen anybody drop it. He drops it, like you said, with a point, it goes end over end. And for some or another, he, he got it to bounce. But did it, did it get over the goal line? Let's see. I think one of the officials said it did, and the other officials said it didn't. So it's going to be out at the 20-yard line for Chowan. That's a huge break instead of having it on the one-yard line. Of course, that had to involve the Chowan here the last two times out. Hawks leading 35-27, 418 to go in his third period. In what has been a great afternoon for football here at Chowan University, and for Robert, my partner, who transferred here from North Carolina West, and your first test to experience football here at Chowan. Yes, sir. I, I absolutely love this atmosphere. You know, at a Division II school, a little bit bigger than a Division III school, you know, I, I was pretty impressed with the turnout here. And you said a lot of conference games get even more people here. 
so this is pretty impressive to me. You know, we got cheerleaders, we got the band out here. Great atmosphere for Division II football. First and 10 Hawks on their own 20. After Wolke's punt, just did get over the goal line. Here's Swift trying to run the fake, and he gets swamped under. That time, he didn't fool the defensive end on the far side. Shelby Ben, the six foot five, 235 pound redshirt freshman, came across it. That time, they tried to run the play action and run. Went to Freeman, and nobody laid a hand on the far side on Big Shelby Ben. Looks like there was a little bit of confusion. The quarterback kind of got up, looked at one of his offensive linemen, maybe a missed assignment right there. So a loss of five on the play brings up second and 15 from the Hawks from their own 15. Hawks in solid royal blue today with a blue headgear. Here's Witt looking to pass. Steps up in the pocket. Still looking for yardage. Stop. Fires. There's a man out there to catch it. Oh, no block. And right through the hands that time of Adrian McNeil. And that had six points written all over. And that's a long jog back down here. McNeil, a red shirt junior from out of Fort Dorchester High School in Charleston, South Carolina. Sometimes when you miss one like that, you come back and make one later when it really counts. That's right. That's so right. hopefully that'll happen to McNeil. Would love to see that for him. Hey, he let it go. It almost seems like Witt is just better playing backyard football. Just let him scramble around once he feels the pressure and just launch one. Third and 15 now for the Hawks. Trying to avoid going three and out for the first time in the second half. Here's Whitney, the look, swings it out to Freeman, far side. Terrell's got a long ways to go to get the first time walker. She hits one defender, tries to fight off another one, but he's going to come up with like five yards shy. And I tell you what, he put a lick on James Young, the defensive back, and Young is paying for it. He loves far contact. Side. He Man. loves contact. He runs right towards people. He ain't running away from anybody. Clock continue to wind here in this third period. We this snap for John Kite to punt it away. As now the young will stumble off the field as they stop the clock. Let's see if they'll start it back now. As they allowed Young to get off the field, now they should start it back. Waiting an official to start it here. As Young just stumbled off the field on that far side and. Started as Kite's on to kick it away. Good time and a pretty good kick. As the ball will take a bounce straight up and down, hustling down to down it. For the Hawks, going to be Isaiah off at the red shirt sophomore from Germantown, Watkins Hill High School product. 259 showing on a Garrison Stadium, Metal Tech and Muscles Rare scoreboard. Also has show on with 35 and McHenry with 27, but we got a ways to go to get this one in the books. 37 yard line is where McKendry will sit up shop here. McKendry looking at first points of the second half. Matter of fact, McKendry's only scored three points since the 10 35 mark at its second quarter. And here's a give to Preston Thompson, and he's wrapped all up in the backfield. Join really starting to get some push up front. And a couple of guys leading the way that time for the Hawks going to be Abdul Abdul Wahid and also Terrell Pearson. It seems like when the Bearcats were having a lot of success, they were moving the ball very fast. You know, they were they were hiking the ball really fast. You know, it was back to back to back to back. And right now they just look super slow. You know, here's a wide receiver screen on the near side, but they've got it. He's got running room in front of him. He'll make his way all the way to the Chowan 35-yard line. They had him making the 34-yard line. That's the right time they set up that little inside receiver screen. And it was Brock Nice and Brave would make his way all the way to the Chowan 34 yard line. Nice uh, play that time. It's good for 25 yards and a first down at the Chowan 34 for the Bearcats of McKendry University. And the fake play fake this time. Metcalf's going to get it out to the 20 yard line. Catch is going to be made on that slant to George Miller. That time that they're getting back to using that play fake again to start to uh, confuse this show on defense in the drive. So there you go. They're starting to run fast. They're snapping the ball fast. They're spreading it out a little bit. That's when they seem like they had the most success. So Chowan needs to watch out before McKendry gets back on the roll. Metcalf has moved McKendry from their own 41 to the, from their own 37 to the Chowan 20. Here's a give to Thompson. He's got running room. He's inside the 10, going to be pushed out near the five yard line. Ran that quick hitter that time to the short side of the field, and Thompson was able to get outside with it and maneuver uh, into the five yard line where it'll be first and goal for the Bearcats. 
Then again, this is where the Bearcats struggled the most, was actually in the red zone. I believe they came up with first and field goals when they were in the red zone. So first and goal from the five. Straight eye backs as they bring a fullback out in front of Thompson. And he's got it. And goes right up the gut, and he runs right into the arms of David Harden. And did he pop well, They said the ball popped out. The officials haven't indicated. They've indicated second down. I think it came out after he was down. And Thompson might have got a little more than he really uh, initially looked like he had. It looked like they had him stopped after about a one-yard gain. He fell forward to the two-yard line. So it'll be second and goal from the two. Once again, fullback uh, right in front of him is going to be Steve Bedlove. Choin moving around defensively. They'll give it to Thompson off the right. Choin has him stopped shy of the goal line. Or did he get in with his second effort? Official coming in from the far side saying it's going to be third down. Thompson thought he got in, as did some of the McKendry offensive linemen. Yeah, but they're not the guys who make the official call to bring up third and goal inside the one with 33 seconds to go on the third quarter. Choin trying to protect an eight-point lead here. Looks like Next half under center. And he'll run the quarterback sneak and get in for the touchdown. So nice drive here by McKendry, their first time in the end zone since the 10 53 mark of that second quarter. And at Metcalf gets his gets his touchdown. And he's in for his first touchdown of the year, rushing the football. Let's see if McKendry will go for two to try to tie this thing up. Said that in 35-33 on the road at Chowan. Well, you look at Metcalf, he's six foot three. All he had to do is fall forward. And they're going to go for two on the Bearcats. Two receivers bunched up to the right, one to the left. Now they'll move some people out as they flip flop the tight end out behind Rouvet. And a man in motion from right on the right. It's cold. Metcalf looking left, and we got a flag. So a procedural call coming here against McKendry. Well, a false start here. You know, other than uh, we've had a couple of holding calls, and of course, the targeting call on Dre Terry, I don't think was certainly in anything intentional, but it's been a pretty clean game, uh, so to speak. Not a lot of personal fouls or anything to that nature. A pretty clean game for both of these teams. Absolutely. Well, we still got a fourth quarter in play. So, so back from the eight is where the extra two will occur here for McKendrick trying to tie this one up. Metcalf looks right, finds it in the vicinity of Jalen Williams. He's got it. We're tied at 35. With 21 seconds to go in the third period, back for the kickoff after this short timeout. Sponsors, First Citizens Wealth Management and First Citizens Investors Services Incorporated, Metal Tech of Murfreesboro, Taylor Freer, Freezer Sales, Subway on Main Street in Murfreesboro, reminding you to eat fresh, McPherson Beverage Company, official beverage supplier for Chowan University, Central Ford located on Memorial Drive in Ahoski, the Royal Chowan News Herald, Stitch Count, Science Wrap, screen, Screening, Embroidery, and More, Carolina Chicken and Barbecue on Memorial Drive in Ahoski, King's Coffee on Main Street, Rebel Realty, PNC Bank, Integrated Family Services, Southern Bank, Southampton Memorial Hospital, Farm Bureau Insurance, and Benchmark Builders. Thanks again to these game day sponsors. Here's the kickoff coming from Lazaria. We're tied at 35 with 21 seconds to go in the third period. Here's Kaim Perry from the five. Let's see if Kaim can get a good run back. He's been really stifled today by this good Kaim kick coverage Charles team for Hawks. Hawks. McKendry. And, and this time Kaim will make his way out near the 24. So Choan with a chance to maybe run a couple of plays here to end this third quarter. And how about this? 35 with a, with a little over 15 minutes left to play here in Choan. It's starting to get fun now, starting to get into crunch time. We got a tie ball game. At the first quarter, you know, at the end of the first quarter, not expecting this, but resurgence by the Hawks. They've really came back a long way and looking really good right now. Here's Whit from the gun on first and 10 from the 24. And he'll give it to Brandon Hughes, who's fighting for some running room. Breaking loose in the second day. First down out there with 39. You know, Hughes doesn't look exceptionally fast, but, you know, he's just... 
did a good time of looking for some yardage and staying behind his blockers, and that's probably going to end the third quarter. On a nice run here, 15 yards by Brandon Hughes, and the third quarter will come to a close. We've got 15 minutes left to go here in the barrel. We're tied at 35 between McHenry and Sean. We're back for the start of the fourth quarter after the short break. This is Sean Football and go see you Hawks.com. Start for the fourth and final quarter here at Chowan. This two teams, McKendry and Chowan, we expected to shoot at, and we've gotten just that today. As we're knotted at 35 and just been handed the numbers here, and almost a thousand yards of offense between these two teams here this afternoon. And we still got 15 minutes left to go here in the barrel. Here's Witt on the play fake. He's going to pull it nine and run with it. Skips away to one tackle and then gets hammered and just as he crossed the 40. He took a pretty good lick and coming up making a stop on him. Uh, from the secondary I'm waiting for that young man to turn around because he certainly well, deserves so credit. That was Darnell Harris. Well As he three, put a pretty good lick that time on Witt after the play fake. So we'll show on with it. First and or second and nine after Witt got a yard to the 41-yard line. Uh, should be second and eight. I'm sorry, second and eight. Witt looks over the defense, which appears to be bringing four here. This Witt has really thrown it well today. He's looking again, and he's looking. Now buys time. He goes down, fired, has Dominic Ford in the McKendry side of the field to the 38-yard line. And Dominic Ford might be injured. He's on his back around the 38-yard line. Definitely got the win. Witt out speed up. again, just bought him enough time, Robert, to let Ford pop loose. And the Chowan training staff attending to Floyd. And give both teams a little break. You know, I, I talked earlier, by the way, Bowie State leads St. Aug, uh, 32 to seven uh, up in Raleigh. Also, uh, a game we thought was a night game is being played this afternoon. Virginia State leads Johnson C. Smith, 16 to nothing. Now, last score we had was Livingstone leading Lincoln, 16 to nothing night in Salisbury. But, Robert, one thing that Coach Place and I talked about, would the heat of the day affect uh, McKendry? You know, do there from up north with the heat of the day as this game has gone along affect them? We'll see in this fourth quarter. You know, I, I think we hit on a little bit earlier. They look like they're moving a lot slower than they were in the first quarter. You know, the second quarter they slowed down a little bit. Third quarter slowed down a little bit more. And we'll see if they pick it back up in the fourth quarter if they continue that downward decline. 514 yards for Chowan this afternoon, 438 for the Vistas from out of Lebanon and Illinois. And you know, I say we get creative with Witt, just let him run around and start chucking the ball yeah. everywhere. <laughs> Trip receivers to the right on his first and 10 from the 38. Floyd looks like he's going to be okay as he's to the sidelines. They'll fake it off it. Witt's got it. Steps away from the tackle, steps away from another. Runs out of bounds near the 30. This young man, man, and you labeled it earlier, six foot four, two twenty-five, is pretty slippery and pretty nifty with his feet. 
And this kid's really impressing me. You know, we, we heard a lot about Metcalf coming into it. You wonder if maybe Witt heard all this talk about, you know, how there's a quarterback coming in that's going to, that's gonna you know, take the day and, and be great. And I think that Witt wanted a little bit of that, too, and he's doing a really great job so far. Second and eight. Second and two from the 30. And here's Squint to fire, and he has a man open and making a catch is Watkins at the 15-yard line. I meet Watkins with the catch of the 15. It's another charm first down. And they, they're going to spot him down at the 16, but a nice throw and catch from Witt to Watkins. The double-double boys, the WW boys with the catches. And it's a gain of 14 and a little first down. The Hawks trying to break this 35-0 tie here at home early in the fourth quarter. Witt's going to hand it away to Offit. Offit's got some running room. He's to the 10th at the back of the 5. Lord the third. Hit the end zone for the touchdown. I tell you what, a booming block here on the near side by Chowan offensive tackle Donald Boone. The preseason all-conference pick. He just leveled Justin Timmons and Michael Offit in the end zone for the first time this season. And Chowan retakes the lead at 41-35. All right, Chowan going 76 yards in six plays. Here's Jackson Brooks, the all important extra point. Snap, spot, kick from Brooks is up, and it is good. Nearly blocked from the right by Thomas is on it. 42-35, Chowan's back in front. We're back for the Chowan kickoff after this short timeout. 12.55 to go here in the bar. Here's Brooks to kick it away here for Chowan. And kick's going to be fielded at the 15-yard line by Kyle Harris. Harris with a return out near the 35-yard line where a couple of Hawks will drive him down at that point. Making the initial hit for Chowan. It's going to be Cortez Paul. Also in on the stop for the Hawks. It's going to be Robert Walker, the redshirt freshman. Just down the road from Gates County High School. They're going to spot the football out of the 37-yard line. He did a pretty good job that time not kicking it to Cole, Robert. So that's, that was a, a nice idea for the show on special teams coaches. You know, and they still end up at the other side of the 30. Yeah. So you just can't get away from it, it looks like. Here's Metcalf on first down. He'll hand it to the left side to Franklin, who cuts up inside, and Franklin's still on his feet out to the 45-yard line. Chase Franklin on Dave Franklin, the sophomore running back from Springfield, Illinois. And he's got about eight yards for Reggie Lee, spins him to the turf. Going to be second to two. Metcalf and company quick to do the offensive line. Franklin's got it again, and Pharrell Pearson's got him out near the 48, believe it enough, for the first time. Robert, you call it. Uh, since they've gone back, when I said today, McKendra, since they've gone back to this quick pace offense, they've got Chowan's defense on stride again. They really start moving the ball quick, and Chowan looks like maybe they're a bit confused. You know, they probably don't have to deal with a lot of quick-paced offenses in the CIAA. It's more of a ground-and-pound type deal. There's Metcalf, screen set up to the far side to Franklin. He gets away from Pearson. Dre Terry's got his eyes on him and to drop him at the 45 or the 44, but the Kidry back in Chowan territory now at the 44-yard line where they bring up a second and short opportunity here for the Bearcats. Good open field tackle by the Rock Rapids. 
North Carolina sophomore for Chowan, who led his team in tackles coming in today with 13 on the season. Second and three now from the 44 of Chowan works McKendrick. They trail here by seven. It's a little swing pass to Franklin again, and he is sandwiched and dropped on the far side. Dre Terry was there originally. Probably will not get credit for the tackle, but coming in, making the stop is going to be Tamori and Moore. Chowan defense recovered quickly, Robert, on that play. Chowan's defense is starting to look a little bit better. Looks like they're catching up a little bit. They, right now, they got a little pause in the action. Looks like they're taking some breaths. It's going to be a, be a big third down right here. Also, a couple back to the 46, so it'll be third and five here, short five. 11.07 left to go in this ballgame. Chowan in front, 42.35. And here's the give up inside to Thompson, and he's gotten the first down. Metcalf just does a great job with that play fake, and I think it kind of throws that show on secondary and linebacking court. And over Thompson to sneak up inside for six yards on a first down at the 39. You know, you don't want to crash in the linebacking court. You don't want them to crash in and get beat over the top or down the middle. Thompson nearing 100 yards. He's got 92 yards on the afternoon. But another fresh set of downs here at the 39 for Metcalf, who's looking to go over the middle. Has a man out there, and it's good for the touchdown. Metcalf fires a wide open Jalen Williams across the middle. He had gotten in behind the defender on here on the near side. Deion Taylor, the red shirt senior from out of Richmond. And Metcalf, much like Witt, just held his own until Williams got open, and he's in the end zone for the touchdown. So right back comes Metcalf and company, and they're an extra point away from tying it up with 10.37 to go. The Chuan D just looks tired right now. Here's the Missario extra point attempt, and it is up in the pines, and it is good. 42 apiece, 1037 left to go in the barrel. We're back for the kickoff after this short timeout. The CIAA would like to thank the following corporate sponsors for their continued support. Blue Lion, Nationwide Insurance, Toyota, and BSM Sports. CIAA fans, please support these companies that generously support us. Also, a special thanks to Integrated Family Services located in Ahoski on Main Street. Integrated Family Services serves 16 Northeast North Carolina counties, specializing in mental health issues, substance abuse, and developmental disabilities. Call their mobile crisis center at 866-437-1821 or Integrated Family Services. McKendry tries the onside kick and it doesn't go 10 yards. That is a fortunate break for Chowan Robert because their offense, their front line was way out of the picture. It would have been an easy recovery for McKendry. I'd like to move by Coach Babcock. It's a nine conference game. You're on the road. You know, take your chances. It's because it's starting to look like whoever's got the ball last is going to win this game. But fortunately for Chowan, it didn't go 10 yards, and Chowan's going to take the football over at the 43-yard line of McKendry with the game tied at 42 with 10.37 left. So Whit will stack up two receivers to the right, and Baker to the left, and he'll let, no, he's going to fake it to Freeman. Whit's going to step out of trouble, fires in the side, it's got Watkins again, he's going to feed it to 25 to 20, to 15, cuts it back, goes down at the 10. I think Watkins with a nice catch, and then was able to hold his balance. Robin and spin his way to the 10 yard line. And Wits is just on fire right now. On fire. It's a gain of 32 and a chill on first down. And it'll be first and goal at that spot. Now can Chowan stick it in the end zone? You know, Chowan's offense have really impressed me. You know, I keep on going back to how we'd be kept on talking about McKendry, McKendry, McKendry's offense, but Chowan's offense is toe for toe with him. 
So you're just quit from the gun on first down. Freeman's got it. A big ball off the left side. Torres in the end zone. Standing. Chowan goes 42 yards in two plays and he takes the lead. So Chowan answers right back with the touchdown. And Terrell Freeman's in the end zone for the, let's see, third, second time today and the third time of the year. Freeman is up to 87 yards on the afternoon. Here's Brooks with the extra point attempt. 48-42, 49 42 with 9.56 left. How about the Hawks scored in 41 seconds after the McKendry touchdown. Back for the Chowan kickoff after this short timeout. game started it's turned out to be sometimes Robert we our prognostications turn out to be right you know usually it goes the opposite way whatever you says is hap gonna happen the exact opposite happens but a few times we're correct Brooks to kick off gonna drive Harris all the way back to the two-yard line Al Harris up to the 15 steps out of a tackle and Chowan's gonna get him down shot of the 20-yard line for the first time today, they're starting behind the 30-yard line on a ball that did not get you down the end That's freshman Cortez Paul with the stop. So he gets Harris down at about the 19-yard line. So can the Chowan defense slow McKendry down, who's caught fire here on the last two possessions. The thing that we haven't seen, Robert, here in the second half, late in that first half that we saw early in the game was Choi was moving so many people in and out defensively. They've kind of gotten away from that here. Metcalf from the gun on first down looks looks right. Does a little pump fake and Jalen Williams with a nice diving effort can't come up with it. They ran a little pump fake near time that kind of froze the defender Jamel Hampton and Metcalf's pass a little bit out of reach for a dive and Jalen Williams. I tell you, that, you know, not only is Metcalf a good quarterback, he has some terrific receivers. He's they got a great receiving core. They got a bunch of athletes on that receiving core. A lot of them are tall, lanky, and just about all of them I've seen have been pretty quick. Here's a give to Preston Thompson running up inside. Thompson got the first down. He's in the secondary, still on his feet, and falls forward after getting bumped here on the near side by Jaquel Pearl, and but it's enough to get. The Bearcats out to the 40. It's a game of 21 for Thompson, who's now over 100 yards. And here comes the pace for McKendry. Here's Thompson again. Big running room off the left side. He's in Chowan's secondary. And Dre Terry has to come up and make the play at the Chowan 42-yard line. And we've got an injured Chowan player, and that might be Tyler Bembry, and it is. Chowan can ill afford to lose their all-conference performer for a year ago. I don't know if you've had a chance to meet Tyler. He's one great young man. And look, fun to talk to and just to, has a great outlook on life as he's holding that right leg. And let's hope he's going to be all right. There's Tim Feldman and the staff here from training staff here for Chowan. And hopefully this is just a cramp. You know, you want to slow down the pace of McKendry, but you don't want to do it by losing your star defensive lineman. That you don't. Hopefully this is just a cramp by Bembry. And, and the way Tim Feldman, the trainer, is working with it, that may be probably what it be. But I, I, I don't mean this in a bad way, but that might have been a good time for a cramp. 
What it does, it slows that McKendree offense down a little bit. And you know, usually you can tell when people are faking a cramp. They just kind of lay down, but uh, that, that looked pretty, pretty realistic yeah. to me. He's kind of limping off the sideline, you know. Uh, that's a long time to hold the act. I, I think he's cramping. And I'll, I'll give you a good point to that, a good example of that here uh, after this play. Uh, about uh, slowing him down. It looks like Tyler's going to be all right. So first and 10 from the 42 for McKendry at a Chowan 42, and they hand it inside to Chase Franklin. And Chase is going to make his way near the 40 for a gain of about a couple. But it's just a couple of weeks ago, uh, Virginia Tech was playing down at Florida State, and they would, according to Willie Taggart, the head coach for Florida State, he accused Virginia Tech of, uh, of faking injuries and slowing his offense down. And like I said, sometimes uh, a cramp can come up at a good time. Second and eight from the four. Here's McKendry. He's going to run a little flat pass out to Franklin. He's going to be hit, dropped in 38. Big hit on the near side from the corner from Jamel Hampton, the freshman from out of Cleveland High School up in Clayton. The gain of only a couple. Physicality. And I don't know if you got a chance to see Vanderbilt play last weekend, but there was one play going back to the cramping. Um, the two defensive, the two defensive backs were, you know, talking to each other, and the guy pushed the other guy down, faked the cramp. Here's Metcalf to foul, but the middle is incomplete. As quick pass across the middle was intended for Kyle Harris, and let's see if Coach Babcock goes for it here. You think he probably would at the 38-yard line of Chowan down. 49-42, with still plenty of time to go, 8-14. Let's see if the Hawks' hard-hitting defense can come up with another stop. McKendry on the season on fourth down conversions, one of two. They have six yards to make it here. Three receivers set with Franklin in the backfield for Metcalf. And Metcalf will give it to Franklin. He goes inside, has the first down and more as he continues to make his way inside the 25 to about the 22-yard line. That's a good read that time on Metcalf. He, he was just looking to read that show on defense and let Franklin have it, and he's got it off the right side. That is a big fourth down conversion here in this game. Big play for McKendry. And it's going to give McKendry a fresh set of downs at the show on 21, down 49-42, just under eight minutes left. See Thompson is back in the backfield. He's... Now to get fake, and here's a nice knock away here on the near side by Jamel Hampton. And he was beaten by a step by Jalen Williams, and Hampton reached around him and knocked him away. Freshman really looks good at corner here at Jamel Hampton. Hampton's had a nice drive. He's, he really lowered the boom on the receiver earlier, and then with a nice play to break up the pass. Plays at a, played at a real good high school program, Cleveland High School up at near Clayton, up in the Raleigh area. 7.48 to go. Here's Preston Thomas with the football. Looking for yardage. Hampton's got him cornered up and drops him around the 15-yard line. Preston Thompson on the carry. So Thompson's going to have a pretty good carry here on his second down. It's going to be a manageable third down. Here, third Thompson and Martin's short now for stop. McKendry at the Chowan 15. It's going to be third and about three here. See if the Bearcats' struggles on the red zone continue. Sean holding to a seven-point lead here at home in their home opener here today. Hawks looking to win for the first time here in 2018. There's a man in motion to tight end from right to left. Metcalf's going to look to throw. Looks right. Fires for intended receiver Williams. It is incomplete. Good job by Hampton again. He just cornered up. That's the thing it, that, it, that I've noticed here a little bit about Metcalf. He was just locked in on Williams all the time. And we've seen Bryce Witt doing some of that as well. Absolutely. Sometimes you see both quarterbacks aren't even looking at other receivers. So they were locked in. And here's Lazario in the field goal unit on. Lazario is two for two today with field goals of 25 and 27. This is going to be from 33 yards out. Snap, spot, kick, long enough, high enough, and it is straight enough. And let's hear your third field goal of the afternoon. Makes it 49-35. Show on with 7.05 to go. We're back for the McKendry kickoff after this short timeout. This is Show on Football and GoCUHawks.com. Coffee on Main 
stream for specialty coffees, teas, delicious lunch specials, live entertainment, and more. King's Coffee and Eatery open six days a week for breakfast and lunch. Evening hours vary. 117 East Main Street in Murfreesboro is their location. Kendra with Azaria's third field goal of the day pulls it in four as here's Azaria's kickoff and Kaim Perry will field at his own seven. Kaim looking for some running room, cuts back through the middle. Here's Perry breaking through. Still on his feet as he makes it out near the 35 yard. A best return of the day from this freshman from a Husky, North Carolina. Just down the road here from Murfreesboro. I was telling Robert here he's new to the Choi campus as the old saying here at Chowan from many years ago, Chowan referred to sometimes as UCLA, University of Chowan, located near a Husky, the home of Kai e. Perry. So the Hawks win it out at their own 35 with a four-point lead, but 6.58 left. You'd love to see the Hawks get another one who scored and drives here. And I'll tell you something that I noticed is a lot of these names you're saying for the Hawks have been around the Raleigh area, around the Ahosky area, Roanoke Rapids. You know, they're doing a great job of recruiting players in this area. They're not letting them get away, go to bigger schools, go to a different D2 school, go to a D3 school. They're keeping them right here at home. And, you know, sometimes it's a big deal. A lot of times you go out of state to recruit your big-time players, but it looks like a lot of their big-time players are from around this area, which is very good that they're keeping them here. Freeman with a nice carry of 13 yards out to the 48. First down Hawks from their own 48-yard line. I was trying to add it as 49-45 lead as we work under six and a half minutes to go. Witt passing, looking, and overthrows Floyd near the 40-yard line. It's almost intercepted with a diving effort from quarterback Blake Benoist, who has one interception this season. Going back to the Bearcats last drive, I really think Hampton was an unsung hero of that drive. You know, breaks up two passes and really smoked a receiver earlier. Yes, he did. So Chowan looking at second and 10 now from their own 48. Another kid from Roanoke Rapids, only a freshman. So we got a stoppage of play here, so hold everything. Now we're set to go. Is they're gonna reset the play clock, I believe. Yeah, they will start the play clock. As Watkins and Baker come to the near side, far side is Paul Good. Quit from the pistol with Freeman to his left. Witt looking, steps up in the pocket, fires, has a man out there, that's good, and he's going to be knocked down, and Paul was almost able to stay on his feet after he got spun around on the far side on the sidelines by Ivan King, and Gooden's going to be spotted down at the 47, so it'll bring up third and five here, big third, biggest third down of the day here for this show on offense. Huge third down. Line to make for the first down. It's between just beyond the 43 of McKendry. It's showing works from their 47. So far, biggest third down of the season for the Hawks. Hey, you're exactly right. Quit from the gun again. Same set that we saw earlier. Long snap down. Here comes the rush. They run the inside screen to Good. Good got the first down. Oh, Good hit it to the house. 2015 10, five touchdowns. Showing had the perfect play call for the blitz. Mark Hall, the offensive coordinator, with a perfect play call, and Gooden got in the scene on the wide receiver screen, and nobody laid a hand on the young man from Sacramento, California. Huge touchdown for the Hawks. That puts him up 10. Here comes the extra point. And blocked! And we called it earlier off air. Yeah. Mr. Gaddis was talking about how they were getting around the end, and sure enough, they did. Let me, we just been uh, told here by Eric Carper did it. Uh, Bryce with it just fucking the school record with 478 yards passing the sample. Wow. Uh, correction, 439 yards because some of that passing yard is beyond the Dominique Ford. So Chowan will, after the block, extra point, leads 55-45 with 535 to go. 
Man, this is in your defensive hands. That was a huge drive by Juwan. You know, they really need to come away with some type of points there. And came away with six. The second time they've only came away with six today, not seven now. Might be a bit of a concern later on when you get towards the CIAA, get these close games. You know? But for right now, 10 point lead, we'll take it. So Chowan will bring that kicking team out, see if they could kick it deep and pin this Kendra team who's down 10 points on the road here with 5.35 to go. You know, for someone that started off the game with an interception, Witt has really turned it around. Ends up setting a school record today. 439 yards passing in this game, and we still got some time left here. Presumably with another drive or two to go. And Terrell Freeman now up over 100 yards with 110. Also, Preston Thompson with 145 for the visitors from out of Illinois. Brooks to kick it off. John, biggest lead of the afternoon there at 10. Still a long ways to go against a dangerous McKendry team. Here's Brooks coming forward, and he'll kick a short kick, but he kicks it to Harris at the 13. See if John can cover here. And Harris has got some running room down the far side, still on his feet, makes his way out to the 47. You know, They've had some good returns, but you got to give credit to those up front guys for uh, McKendry. They've done a nice job blocking for both uh, Harris and Cole. Right. McKendry, we, we hit on it a little bit earlier. chawan has got them beat on size, but I'll tell you what, they're very well coached. You know, they're they're all strong guys, too. They might not have the actual size that Chawan does, but well coached, very strong, high football IQ guys. So first attempt from the 46 of McKendry, the own 46. Here's Metcalf to foul on first down. He fires it across the middle, and it's incomplete. Just over the tight end's head, who was falling to the turf, and that was Ledlow. And that'll bring up second and 10. Stops the clock with 5.23 to go. You know, Robert, you look at Brooks as a freshman. I'm sure the young man's leg is going to get a little bit stronger here. Obviously, he's kicking a few yards back further than the college ranks. But it shows the importance of having a kicker that can kick that kid out of the end zone here today. So, so second and ten, Metcalf again, looking to pass, going to throw the screen to far side, and Dre Terry is there to knock it away and stop him and fill the matter of fact, a loss of like three yards on the play. That, that, you could see the Chowan defense. They had that play all scattered out well, and Terry's going to drop uh, Franklin for a, about a three-yard loss back at the 44. You know, this is, this is my first Chowan football game. I'm already starting to fall in love with the physicality that the Hawks bring. So here's third and 12 now for McKendry. Metcalf looking to pass. John's going to sack it. Back at the 35, the first sack of the day. And a sack clock committee. Terrell Pearson, Reggie Lee, David Hart, and also Waheed as they get Metcalf all the way back to the 35. It'll bring up four and about 21. And McKendry's going to go for it here down 10 with 428 and counting. So typical Chowan defense. You got three or four blue jerseys on the quarterback. And let's see if the Chowan defense can hold here on fourth down. They the pass far side. It's knocked away. Nice defense on the far side by George Parker. Huge defensive stand by the Hawks. And Chowan will force a four and out and get the ball to the Kendry 35 yard line with 415 left. And you can see it all over the home sideline. You got people waving their hands. You got people standing up and clapping. It's starting to get excited here at Chihuahua. Now you got to take care of the football. Here with 4.15 left. So my question is, do you take Witt out of his element? Do you keep, or do you keep on feeding him, you know, let him run around a little bit? Or do you just hand it off to the running back? I think you're going to see a heavy dose of Terrell Freeman here. As Witt will run work from the gun with Freeman directly behind him. We'll see what Chom will take what they give him. Here's the give to Freeman, trying to get the corner turn, trying to stay in bounds, and he'll get close to the first down marker with Freeman. Stayed in bounds. Yeah, before he ever goes down. And Clark will continue to roll as they were trying to strip the ball from Freeman's hands. Terrell showing that veteran uh, eyes. He, he knew he was getting close to the goal line. He cut it back in. And it's a gain of about eight. And it'll bring up second and two from the McKendry 27. And since the second quarter on, Freeman's really been running all over the Bearcats D. Yeah. Yeah. Since 
he had one yard at the end of the first quarter. He's got 118 now. They haven't put up that eight spot that he just got. Here's Whit from the gun, puts Baker in motion. They'll give it to him on the jet sweep. Baker looking for some running room, looking to get around the corner, get that first time marker. He's pinned in and falls forward back to the line of scrimmage. Stayed in bounds again. That's going to be huge right now. You know, you got about three minutes left. Got to stay in bounds. Got to keep the clock running. We got a show our player with a cramp, and we'll stop the clock with 3.11 left. Yeah, I thought he had a chance to cut it back inside. Did did uh, Baker did not, and that injured show on Lyman is back up on his feet. And that was Aaron Ray, the red shirt junior. Looked like he had a cramp, but he's okay now. And to give him the first down, he did get the first down. I'm sorry. So Baker got the first down and somehow or another got loose and got the first down. So Chowan with a fresh set of downs with 311 left as we wait for the official to wind the clock here. And they'll give it, no, they'll get a whistle when we got a false start here. I think it gets Chowan. No, they got a timeout. Chowan got a timeout. We'll take a break here with 309 left in this one. Chowan trying to protect a 55 45 lead here at home. We're back after this short timeout. All your real estate needs. Are you in the market to purchase a home? Or to rent or sell your home you currently own? Whether in this zip code or another, Alicia Revel and her crew are ready to meet your real estate needs. PNC Bank is a proud game day sponsor located. 37 East Main Street, let PNC help you with your banking needs. With PNC, make every ATM in the world free. Visit PNC.com or visit your local branch on Main Street today. Sign up for the checking account that works harder for you. Bet you on after the timeout, has it first and 10 at the McKendry 25, up 10. Here's Michael Lopit getting inside, Basson to the outside, got the corner turn, still on his feet, but unfortunately gets pushed out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Not what you want, they'll call it swat of the 18, but what you do want is that uh, seven yards he just gave him. Chowan continue to wind it here, but unfortunately got out of bounds. You know, the whole Chawan running game has been pretty strong since the second quarter on. Freeman has the most yards, of course, with 118, but it looks like they have a total of 213 rushing yards. Yeah, and like you said, that's after one yard in the first quarter. As they start the clock here, Chawan trying to let this play clock run down as much as possible. Here's Offit with the football. Michael trying to back side side, and they're cutting back inside. He's going to be driven down short of the first down. Hope Terrell Freeman's not hurt. Maybe they're just getting off at him for a little change of pace here. And so Chowan, with a looking at third and short here. One more first down. Mike can stick this one in the can, Robert. But you don't want McKendry to get the ball back here, even though Chowan's up 10 with 2.10 to go. You know, I would take a score right here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Give them a little bit of time to try to cut down a 17-point deficit. I don't, think, I don't think they'll have enough firepower to do that. Inside of two minutes left, Whit waiting on the snap as he runs his play clock down to about three. And he'll let Michael Offit have it. Michael Offit's got the first down, I believe. It's, yeah, he's got the first down easily. Yeah, the line of eight was at 15. He falls, stumbled to the 13, stumbled to the 13, and that might put this one in the can for the Hawks. He might be able to put this game on ice. Yep. How about the fumble at the one-yard line when you're getting ready to go down to 31-7? to seven. It changes the whole game. It did. It the whole game. It was a play of the game here. You know, just a huge momentum swing. You see how much a momentum swing can do for you. Ten-point totally lead here for the Hawks. McKendry's not trying to stop the clock here with 120 left. Whip will probably just take a knee here. No, he's going to let Michael off it, have it. Michael's tripped up in the line of scrimmage. He was trying to bounce it outside. And I don't think McKendry's going to try to stop it here. And you know, the Hawks come in 0-2, and might have kind of a bleak outlook, but you play two FCS teams, you know, and you come in here and 
you play McKendry at your home field and just protect protect it. You know, you're you're down by almost 31 to seven. You end up winning 55 to 45, presumably. I guess a pretty darn good seconds. quarterback mm -hmm. and a good running game to go along with it. And you know, Witt showed that he was a really good quarterback, and Freeman shows that he's a really good running back. And Tuan's defense really, really stands up. Here's Freeman up inside, Terrell back in the lineup. And that's probably going to do it here. Chowan's got 704 yards of offense, Robert. Wow. Quarterback sets the screen record. Chowan comes out with a W. That's a pretty good day here in Murfreesboro. The Hawks will not have to snap it again. Tim Place is going to win his 39th game as a head coach here. Coach Mike Babcock's going to lose his 23rd as McKinney will drop to two and two. Chowan is going to go to one and two and come home to play FSU next week. And what a Hopefully we can get Bryce split up here to chat with us and coach Tim Place after this one. As the Hawks win it here this afternoon, 55 to 45, Robin and Bobby back with you after this short timeout. at Chowan as the Hawks win for the first time in 2018. And Robert, you must be the good luck charm here as the Hawks come back from being down 24-7 and a fumble away from going down 31-7.
they grabbed the football at the one yard line and it was all show on from there. They drove it 99 yards and here we go. And the Hawks ended up winning over a good McKendra team, 55 45. You know, it's kind of funny to think that one play could have changed the game, but we hit on it, you know, multiple times, just saying that the, that the turnover at the one-yard line from McKendry really kind of jarred them and really set you on off. Yeah, you know, you mentioned about it, you mentioned it a couple of times, and Coach Place alluded to it earlier. He knew this team was going to be a little bit out of kilter to begin with because the the – amount of time that it was not able to get on the practice field due to this hurricane because Sean had to evacuate the campus here. But once this team got in tune, once this team got their legs underneath them, they were a different football team. Right. I mean, to me, it just shows you how good Chawan can can really be, you know, when they have all their stuff together. I haven't seen the other teams in the CIAA, but I would assume that, you know, they, they'd have a pretty good shot against anybody saying that McKendry beat Bowie State last week? No, Bowie correct? State beat them 47-44. Okay, well, close game. Close right. game. So it, it shows me that they have a pretty good chance in the CIAA. Chawan with 231 yards rushing today, 478 passing, so 709 yards. But I tell you what, the is pretty doggone good as well. They have 250 yards on the ground, 360 passing, so 556 yards. What's that? 1,200, over 1,200 yards here this afternoon you know, by these two teams, and it's evident on the scoreboard with a 55-45 win. Both offenses just prolific, you know, and the defensive, the defensive side of the ball for both teams weren't necessarily bad. It's just that the offense is so good for both teams, you know, they're moving the ball, they're slicing and dicing, and, and a lot of points on the board. We had this afternoon 23 for 33. Well, they just changed it on me. Just changed the screen on me. So, uh, yeah, here it's back. Uh, we had 23 of 33, one interception, 439 yards is a school record, and three touchdowns. Of course, Dominic Floyd had one pass that was complete for 39 yards. Rail Freeman over 123 yards. Fifth time he's been over 100 yards in his career. Uh, also, uh, Whit rushing for 45 yards. Brandon Hughes 36 and off at 25. And, and that's one question I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have for Coach Place. You know, what happened with this running game? You know, you got one yard at the end of the first quarter. You end up, what, rushing for 231 yards. What changed? And that, I thought that was a big key because it took a lot off Whit's shoulders. You know, he was a little shaky early through that interception, but, man, did he get on fire from there. Like Paul Gooden, six catches today. How about 190 yards and catches today for Paul Gooden? Baker, five catches, 114 yards. Watkins, who's a big time receiver. Also five catches here this afternoon. We just been handed our final stats uh, here this afternoon. Uh, Freeman had five catches out of the backfield for 42 yards. On the opposite side, Preston Thompson rushes 20 times for 145 yards. Also, uh, Chase Franklin rushes for 75 yards on 13 carries. Ravey had eight catches for 114 yards. Reeds Metcalf, 27 of 44 for 306 yards here this afternoon. Let's give you the total numbers here. 24, 35 rushes for Chowan, 231 yards. Uh, 24 of 34 passing, one interception for uh, 478 yards for a total of 709 yards. McKendry, 250 yards on the ground and 42 rushes, 27 of 44 uh, passing for 306 yards and 556 yards of of offense for McKendrick. How about McKendrick? You know, one thing that kept him in the game, Robert, you kept alluding to it was their special teams. They had 229 yards in kickoff return yardage here today, which is really unfounded. That's a huge number in, in returns. But nonetheless, Sean stayed away from the penalty flag today. Only three penalties. He said it had 20, combined 20 in the first two games. They have only three penalties uh, here today. But like I said, pretty clean game. Remember McKendrick at the end of the first half had a big lead in, in uh, time of possession. It ends up 30 minutes and 47 seconds for the Bearcats, 29-13 for uh, Chowan uh, here this afternoon. McKendry was 7 of 8 in the red zone, Chowan 5 for 6, and it ends up with a 55-45 uh, lead here this afternoon as Chowan leads the way and wins here 55-45. And here comes Coach Place. He joins him. To come chat with me. Trey Terry, a big afternoon too. 13 tackles for the sophomore here from... 
from Running Rapids, uh, and Coach Tip Play is going to step in and chat with us about his his uh, first victory of the year, and and uh, he's made the long trip to us, and making up the stack. You know, one day, Coach, we're going to get uh, see if we can get uh, a new AD, Mr. Pat Machuda, puts an elevator in this place with help from things like this. Great win, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Coach, we we looked at this game, and and you were really concerned about what kind of start you were going to get from these kids because <laughs> you've been off the field a lot here due to Hurricane Florence. Uh, it seemed like midway to second quarter, your kids got their legs underneath. You know, sir, as I was just telling Mr. Motley, um, all we did for, you know, we just won a football game. It was a game. But there's, there's people south of us that are really hurting and struggling. And... Um, you know, our thoughts, our thoughts and our prayers are with them. So, you know, in answer to your question, sir, yeah, I, would, I was concerned because, you know, we were inconvenienced. Um, you know, we had no life-altering issues. You know, we didn't have some young men that got back until Wednesday. So our conditioning wasn't good because we hadn't seen them. We hadn't practiced since a week ago Monday right before the hurricane. So, yeah, you know, it is what it is. Our young men competed for 60 minutes. They did what we asked them to do. Um, Coach Hall and his staff did a great job preparing. You know, keeping in mind, they didn't have a complete offensive line until Wednesday. So, yeah, it's uh, 18 played a real good game. Yes, uh, he was really good today. Yes, school, sir. School yeah. record, 40 and 30 yards passing. Coach, one thing I wanted to ask you about, because Bright was fantastic today, but you get... At the end of the first quarter, you got one yard on the ground. You end up with 231 on the on the ground. What change would your running game after that second quarter? I, I would say a big, a big play of the game is when they fumbled it. I think on their plus three, we took the ball 97 yards. It allowed our offense to keep their defense on the field, and I'm not sure they ever recovered from that. I believe we scored every other opportunity we had up until that time. I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, so I, I just think it was our offensive line doing a heck of a job imposing our will on them. Um, you know, we beat a good team. I mean, they're, they're, they are a good team. That Metcalf will be as good as anything we see. He was better than the kid at Campbell, um, his ability to catch and throw. They challenged us from, an all, you know, from a defensive perspective. They, they do some real nice things offensively. And, you know, our, 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 we're, we're young. And we, we hadn't practiced. I mean, the last game we played was Davidson, and Davidson is the triple. And then they left. So, you know, we hung in there. And, and, and you know, I come back to, you know, for three hours on a Saturday, we had fun. But there's people south of us that they don't have electricity. They don't have an ability to sleep in their own bed. You know, we were inconvenienced. But our, our kids rose above it. Yes, sir. Coach, you told me here a couple of weeks ago when we had, we had the community tonight that a great spring that Bryce had. He said, you you told me you'll see a much better quarterback uh, here this season. Man, he's been as good as advertised, what you told me that day. He was really good today. He was, sir. You know, he's doing everything you want of a quarterback. He's climbing the pocket. He's extending plays. He's running with the ball. He, um, I'm proud of the young man. You know, he he, uh, he had a good day. He had a real good day. Oh, it was a good day for Cho one. You yes, know, it was. It was a good day for the football program. And your defense made some plays in the second half and, and in the first half. Got you going. Dre Turry gets back in the game yes, as a team high 13 tackles. I thought Jamel Hampton made some huge plays in the secondary late. Yep. George Parker makes a huge play on that fourth down on the far side. Coach, guys defensively made the plays when you needed to. Yes, sir. And, and and you know what? The defense played a better second half. We got stops when we needed them. We we that allowed the offense to get us the cushion. You know, um, you know, we got fortunate when they tried to onside kick it. Obviously, the film will tell us, but I think we left earlier and the ball just fortunately died, which gave us a short field. We capitalized with it, but yes, sir. Yeah, it was. It's a, you know, they're a good program. They're they're a very good program, and um, it, it has as it always feels good to go home with a win. That it goes, Coach. Uh, enjoy this one. Yeah, we will see you next uh, Saturday night. Fable State comes to town. Yes, sir. And yeah, thanks for hustling up and joining us. Enjoy the evening. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you very much. All right, that's Coach Tim Place talking about his team's uh, win here this afternoon, 55-45, and we're going to talk to uh, our star player of the game offensively. It was Bryce Witt today. A school record, 439 yards passing, and, and Bryce is able to get uh, the headset on, and uh, I'll get him squared away here. Uh, 
Bryson, congratulations. Great afternoon. Thank you. What were your, what were your thoughts early in this game? The team was a little slow to get going, uh, a yeah. little uh, shaky, a little beginning. You, you threw the interception. What were your thoughts at that time? Uh, at that moment, I mean, after I threw the interception, I was like, I mean, I've thrown a lot so far this season. I'm not happy about that. I need to work on that. But, I mean, my mindset is this next play. I got to get to the next play. Just focus and can't get the offense, can't drop their heads about that. I got to keep them going because I'm the leader of the offense. So, after that moment, I was like, I need to step up. Let's go. I got to play the next play. You guys get the fumble on the one-yard line. You drive it 99 yards, and all of a sudden, this offense gets in gear. What happened? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, f I felt like I could sit back there all day. The O-line played fantastic all day long. We could run the ball. I could sit back there four or five seconds, sometimes six. And then the receivers made plays today. I mean, offensively, we had a fantastic day. Receivers made plays, O-line. I mean, we ran the ball good. I mean, that's all you can ask for. And be successful, be consistent, punch the ball. And we're getting close to the end zone, punch the ball in, and we did that today. Yeah, I thought your patience was really good today. You, you talk about habit time, but it allowed you to have some patience yes, as sir. well. Definitely. When Coach Tim Place had told me a couple weeks ago, you might have heard me tell him back when we had the community tonight, that you had a great spring. Yes, sir. What, what was different about the spring? What did you do different? How have you, how have you become a better quarterback? I mean, honestly, last year coming in as a true freshman and playing straight out of high school, it was really an eye-opening experience from high school straight to college. And uh, last year, I mean, we didn't uh, have the best year. We, we weren't very happy about that, and that really motivated us this year. And I, I felt like I needed to step up as a leader on this team to lead the offense and lead this team. And the springtime, I just felt so much more comfortable back there after having a year and a season of offense and just playing college football. Just the experience has slowed the game down and helped me out a lot. Tell me about uh, your good friend, another sophomore on the defensive side, Dre Terry, 13 tackles today. Yes, sir. We are roommates. And we were roommates last year and we were roommates this year. I mean, that's my brother, man. We've been living together the past two years. I mean, he's a dog. So, I mean, last year we were in competition and trying to see he's on offense, we're on defense. I mean, we talk, I mean, since we live together, we talk all the time and we think that uh, this year we need to step up as leaders because he was a true freshman last year. And uh, I know that he got the uh, rookie of the year week of the week last year twice. And so we were in kind of competition, just competing within each other. But, man, that's my brother, man. Man, and yeah, we have a great relationship. And I was upset. I was like, man, when he got ejected early in the first half, I was like, man, I got, I got this for you. Don't worry about it. And when I got in the locker room, he was like, bro, he was like, turn up for me, yo. I was like, hey, stay focused, cause they're gonna review it at halftime. So make sure you keep your mind in the game. You come back in. So he came back in and he played great. He was great in the second half. Yes, sir. He had uh, seven of his uh, 13 tackles in the second half. Had a couple big plays, special on the screens and little flares like to the quarterback. I don't know if you noticed or not. I broadcast his high school games. Did you? I broadcast yeah. when he plays. High school, so, uh, yeah, so now, like now you guys get a little break. You get Fayetteville State coming in uh, next week. Start conference play. You anxious to get to Fayetteville State now? Yes, sir. Definitely. I mean, I mean, Chowan University, Murfreesboro. I mean, like we said, this is our house. I mean, you come in here, you gotta take it from us. I mean, when we play here, I mean, it's just so comfortable playing at home. I mean, the crowd gets into it. I mean, it's just a great atmosphere to play in. Thanks for hustling up, and joining us. Yes, sir. Congratulations on a school record 439 yards in a game and. Three Three touchdowns, and you got in the end zone uh, a couple of times running the football as well. Uh, you know, you talk about Dre being rookie of the year a couple of times last week. I know who will probably going to be the offensive player of the week. This week in the CIAA, it's going to be my man here, Bryce Wick. Grace, congratulations on a great game. We'll Thank see you next week. Thank you. Thanks for hustling up. Be careful going down those bleachers with those cleats. We don't need an injured quarterback from talking to the, to the radio guy. That's Bryce Wick, everybody. Uh, join us here this afternoon. We'll let Robert get in, and we'll have a few final words of this one. With Robert stepping back in, making his day you in the radio this afternoon. It's been a lot of fun here to have uh, Robert by his side. And uh, uh, well, you, you you kept talking about how much you enjoyed the, the CIAA experience this football. Were you kind of surprised at what you saw today? You know, I, coming into it, I had done a little bit of research, you know, about about the CIAA because, of course, we're kind of a split school. We got a couple we got a couple sports that are in Conference Carolinas and a couple sports that are in the CIAA. But it, I knew that CIAA football was really strong. You know, 
I didn't expect a 55 to 45 game. Right. But uh, I, I knew we were going to be tough. I knew all the schools we were going to be playing would be tough. And um, did some research on McKendry too, and I, I knew they were going to be a solid team as well. So um, I mean, it's it's everything we thought it'd be. It was it was a shootout, and we ended up on the right side of it. Yeah, we did. Well, fun working with you. We'll do it again next Saturday night. Yes, sir. Good Absolutely. luck on the mound tomorrow. Thank you. Strike. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's strike. That's what I need to throw. Throw strikes. <laughs> that's my partner, Robert Burns, making his debut with me this afternoon. Like, great working with him. It's good to have somebody in the booth with me. He's going to join me for basketball some as well. But we had a fun time this afternoon, as did all the Charlotte Hawk fans here this afternoon at Garrison Stadium. They were treated to a 55-45 win. We'll see you next Saturday night when Federal State comes to town on Community Club Day night here at the Garrison. From my partner, Robert Burns, this is Gaddis Hodge. He's been your farewell and give me the final score. It was to 155. McKendry 45 here at every snap of the ball here on GoCUHawks.com. Good night, everybody.